What's going on, guys? This podcast is brought to you by Manscaped. And if you use my code RBP, you get 20% off your order plus free shipping. Guys, you can't beat the deal. Or if you click manscaped.com forward slash RBP, it'll take you right to this page and it will apply the code automatically. See here, it says, congratulations, your discount 20% off plus free shipping from the Real Bodybuilding Podcast will be applied at checkout. And guys, I want to show you this because this thing right here is the beard trimmer. It's actually my favorite product they make. The, the entire beard kit. So we just click out of this right here. We go to products. And then we go to the Beard Hedger Pro Kit. If you go to this, it literally has everything. This beard shampoo and this brush and this balm I use every day. Uh, this is a beard oil. This is the balm and conditioner. I don't use those as much, even though they're great. But this brush, the beard oil, and the beard shampoo, and this trimmer have been absolute lifesavers. Guys, 140, you take 20% off that, plus free shipping. Use my code RBP, or like I said, click the link, manscaped.com forward slash RBP. Get the savings, guys, get the free shipping. And honestly, your beard will never look better. Thanks, guys. What are you drinking, Mike? Protein shake. Healthy, Mike. Why protein shake? No pizza today? No, I had I had Wendy's on the way home. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to think about which one it was. So you have so it's like, is it like alternating shit meals, like Wendy's, then a clean meal, then like something else shit? I don't discriminate against food, but I eat all food. And all also- food is good. <laughs> all food is good to me. There's no such thing. <laughs> there's no such thing as cheap meals. Is what you're no. saying. Food is just food. Uh, yeah. I gotta tell you. So I, so you know, I've been going to MMA. I realized I'm way hungrier on the days when I go. Well, yeah, like, you're burning. Like you last calories night, and you burn and fucking. Last night I years. was fucking starving. When I was fucking like at night, I was like, holy shit! So I ended up eating some donuts. Yeah, you deserve it, but the, <laughs> I worked. I worked hard. Work hard, myself. reward yourself. That's what I say. <laughs> I gotta Instant keep up. Reward food. <laughs> I gotta keep up with Ian. This motherfucker is like already looks like he's like an athlete, like a, like a fucking sprinter. Uh. <laughs> I don't know how the fuck you like. He time warped back ten years and fucking yeah. looks like he's twenty twenty eight. <laughs> yeah. He went from fucking completely jacked bodybuilder to like fucking sprinter in like a week. Yeah. Uh, what's going on, man? How's your shoulder? That's good. Yeah, it feels really good. Just working on just certain range of motions coming back or taking longer than others, but it's only been like six weeks. So, are you actually be patient? Are you actually working with weights now or no? I I don't I do I do I can get decently. I can put weight on now for back stuff for certain things because like my pulling is a lot better, mm-hmm. but pressing is still kind of usually really lightweight, but just controlling motions. Cause I can't, I'm not really supposed to get like this kind of depth of range yeah. and drive out of there. Like I yeah. didn't, they didn't cut my pec. So I'm not, my pec isn't an issue. It's just my, where they cut my front delt is like really fucking weak. Dude. Like, they mangled me in there. When you're doing any pulling, I know they cut your bicep though, right? Yeah, the biceps feels good. My biceps like the fullest it's been in fucking forever. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually looking the other day. I'm like, oh my god, I have a normal like my bicep actually looks normal now because it was rotated in for so long. Like if yeah. I tried to turn out and pose, I couldn't pose it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So now it's like it's actually when I when I do curls now it doesn't my shoulder doesn't hurt. So I'm like, oh look at that. Jeez, but man, I'm only curling like still like twelve pounds at the most. It makes me want to. Uh... It makes me want to go back and get my stuff refixed, like my tricep surgery. Like it makes me want to go back to see a doctor and be like, "Hey, can you fix this again?" Because I don't think they did it right the first time. Yeah, but I'm gonna I, do my bicep next year. This thing that's torn. I'm gonna see if uh, where's it torn? Anything you can be done? What are you looking at this fucking thing? Oh, it's at the top. Where is it torn? <laughs> it's torn. I didn't see the top because your shirt was covering it's it. Like I got a good peak. That's like a <laughs> that's like a Jake that's a Jake Cutler tear. I tore it up and then I tore it down. Oh. I fixed it when I tore it up, and then I boxed and fucking 
tweaked my arm on a bag. Or yeah. the first time I did tweaked on a bag, the second time I tweaked it sparring. The guy threw threw his arm up the last second and my arm jerked. And yeah. I was like, fuck, man. I didn't even think you could tear shit when you're boxing. I um I've only torn shit boxing. I've never really? hurt myself. Well, really? I, hurt, I tore my pec pressing 200 pound dumbbells, but yeah, all the other fucking bicep twice boxing. Those are all boxing. Mm-hmm. How? I, I never heard of like tearing a a bicep like when you're boxing. I don't. Know, is that a normal injury? Yeah, for bigger guys. Huh. That's why you gotta like you gotta. I was even gonna ask Ian about it because Ian's into like getting back into what he was doing before it's like you kind of have to acclimate the body especially being a bigger guy and you've had all the stress on your chin on your tendons and joints yeah with all this mass like you kind of have to acclimate your body to doing these types of movements again because i know a lot of bodybuilders bodybuilders big guys who get into boxing yeah. and they pop biceps because they're just not used to that torque yeah and if you're not like locked into your shoulder and like coming around like torquing through your hip and throwing Yep, yep. If that arm is punching, it's like one little angle, it's doing and a pop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would assume it's the same with like running and not having really run consistently over years. You have to probably like really ease your way back into that. Like, do you like just do like stride outs now and stuff? And or yeah, do you do that's jogging? Exactly, like, that's exactly what we did. Like, there was like definitely, obviously, at this point, we're not doing any all out running, like, not even close. Yeah. Um, and any like crazy, like, I don't know if you guys know running, like what bounding is where it's kind of like jumping yeah. lunges, like that kind of stuff in the training. Obviously I wasn't doing that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, so we do like 50 meter strides at like 60, 70% and then a 50 meter jog and a 50 meter stride, 50 meter. And then we were doing like a bunch of like drill stuff. And, um, mm-hmm. honestly the hardest part for me was just the warm up, like jogging, like 800 meters to a kilometer was fucking so hard for me. Yeah. Like running at <laughs> the side where there's a little more power behind it was a lot easier than just yeah. jogging. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Eight hundred meters is what? Like uh twice right not twice. Twice around yeah, the track. Twice around the track. Yeah. 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 Um hi Ian. How are you? Hey, good. <laughs> you look what's, uh what's up, spring chicken. We were yeah, we were just talking about your photos <laughs> that you're posting. It's like you look like you fucking fucking decreased in age by ten years and lost all this weight like in a week. What the fuck happened? Yeah. Well, my weight came down like the first drop and it hasn't really changed much since. Um but yeah, I mean, I definitely can tell like my, like, I feel a lot better for sure. I think, you know, from getting the food down a bit, then my sleep, I'm going to bed a lot earlier because I'm not staying up to eat six yeah. meals, you know, like I'm getting to bed at 10, 10 30 at the latest, like, you know, whenever Melissa's going to bed, I'm kind of getting into bed and just like putting a movie on, falling asleep when I fall asleep. Yeah. Whoa, where the fuck is Paul here? Hey, are you, are you okay? Every no, week. I tore my peck. Every week. <laughs> Holds up a sign. What? Did you actually your peck? <laughs> Pardon? Did you actually tear your pec? Yeah, I think so. It's balled I, up. Oh, I wasn't gonna. I was gonna get into it with Mike because he was talking about popping his bicep boxing, but I wanted to wait for you to come come on so you could tell them yourself. Yeah, I got ice. Take the shirt right off. Now. Let's see it. <laughs> I sent a picture. I got ice on it right now. Yeah, it happened at MMA tonight. <laughs> Let me see if I can get that photo up here somehow. Uh, I told him right I pop. I pop my bicep fucking boxing both times. Really? Yeah. Like just recently, like since your surgery, you mean? No, no, no. Like no. in the past, like I tore this bicep and then I had it repaired and then like I tore it up and then when I got it repaired, I went back to boxing. And I tore it down. No way. And I never got it fixed since I was like, "Fuck!" I was doing security. I'm like, I'm not fucking going through this whole process again because I wasn't going to stop boxing. So yeah, I was like, whatever. This here. I don't know if you can see it there. Is it black yeah, and blue yet? That you area. Can kind of uh, see the well, there. You, you can see the divot right here. Well, it's already torn, and it's that's a that's from a prior tear. No, I know. But, um, but it was a little more. You can see the balling above. But this, yeah. This, yeah. This, this ball right here wasn't there. The next picture, though, of what I think shows the ball better. I didn't download the other one. I'm not oh. going to. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> one anyway. Ball. That's all you get. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't WebMD, man. We're just. Yeah. <laughs> so we, uh, me and Paul were, I we both got fucked up today, but he's obviously a lot worse. But we were learning some, uh, some hip escapes and whatever fucking some hip some some I don't even know what you fucking a side it. mount. Pedging a side mount. He was trying <laughs> <laughs> I mounted you. <laughs> we were trying to learn uh to keep side mount while the other guy tries to hip escape. So yeah. Paul Paul was on top and they're like okay they're like Fuad you got 15 seconds get out. So as soon as we started like in the first three seconds Paul was like stop stop and I'm like okay so I stopped 
And he's like, I think I tore my pec again. I'm like, oh fuck. So <laughs> I think it's because fuck. I think it's because like so when we when we bench ever since Paul tore his pec, like if this is where your chest is, Paul usually stops like here. He won't go all the way down mm-hmm. because he's always scared he's gonna re tear it. So yeah, when we were in that, when we were in that, when he was in that side mount position and he was on top of me, he was fully stretched mm. and we hadn't done anything where he would have like warmed up his chest. So I think that was maybe what did it. Yeah. So I don't that must know. be pretty common. I'm sure it's pretty, pretty common. Dude, for guys, like bigger guys, when, yeah. when you try to make like explosive, like or jerky movements or like really burst like movements when you're a bigger guy, like, I noticed when I, would, when I was doing security, if we get into like, altercations or whatever i'd have to like put my hands on someone and like manipulate them i'd almost like something would cramp a bit because i was yeah. like yeah. such a like a big dude and then i was already already and then asking my muscles to like fire like crazy fast they were like what the fuck like well yeah and you yeah, would fade right but you haven't warmed yeah up, like, like that and you're fucking trying to snap the fucking muscle into place like like that sudden tension like that you mean like yeah. like that burst yeah well we were talking about it's funny we were talking about that because what I noticed today was the fighters, they move in like a snap at like a snap speed. Whereas we are like, as bodybuilders, we're conditioned to not do that. You know what I mean? Like we purposely yeah. don't, don't snap the weight. Like when we come down, we don't snap it back because we're like, we want to try and get as much muscle activation as possible. Well, these mm-hmm. guys are like, everything's just go, go like really, really fast movements. So I think that's something we're going to have to like. Get so used I've to. always compared bodybuilding to like, if you compare it like relative to a martial art, it's like almost like judo mm. in the sense that like you're, you're understanding, like taking, giving and taking Movement, weight. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 So you're moving, you're moving with stuff. You're like putting your weight into something that's coming back yeah. and then you're using that momentum to throw somebody or get them off balance. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Bodybuilding is the same. Like we take weight in and then we move away from weight or we speed up reps or explode at certain times. Ian, are you eating it's a sandwich? Control. Yeah, well, this is just made me a nice sandwich. You want to see? I'm so fucking happy for you right now. <laughs> <laughs> How's the I running have, going, Ian? I have so much joy in my life right now. You're eating a fucking, <laughs> like a normal sandwich. Like, Turkey, some, some Swiss on there, some it's mayo. Amazing. <laughs> now Melissa can actually use her cooking skills to like make you nice yeah. shit. Yeah, this is great. Yeah. <laughs> Good for you. So I thought, I thought I was like, guy gets on, the guy uh gets on top of me and he's like okay now you know yeah. try, try try and escape so i'm like all right so he's like 150 pounds paul maybe yeah 160 maybe he's kind of tall yeah he's taller so i kind of like throw him over and i was about to i thought i'm like okay, yeah I'm gonna, I'm gonna get on top of him and then he fucking grabs my arm and he's like this like he's got it in a fucking arm bar i'm like okay <laughs> so quick <I'm> a- <laughs> so quick do it <laughs> dude it was like <laughs> I thought yeah. I was like I had this moment of like I could think and I could think back to it now. I had like this moment of happiness because I'm like, all right, I got him off me. I'm on top of him. I'm gonna mount him. And then as I was turning <laughs> over, he grabs my arm and he's like stretches it. I'm like motherfucker. <laughs> 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 it's it's fucking really cool, man. It's like me and Paul are having a fucking blast doing it. But well, uh, before I, before I got hurt, I had you when we were practicing those, practicing those side mounts. I had you in a pretty good hold there, but I couldn't fucking. You were able to, to get out of it. You were fucking, I, you're just I, too big and strong, man. I turned you over, yeah. Yeah. Um, but then when you had me down, I was fucking, I was pinned. <laughs> I couldn't get up. <laughs> well, I think you're, you're, I think the reason I got you is because your knees weren't spread. Is that why? Yeah. And you were too far over. Anyway, we're getting, yeah, yeah. Yeah. this is going to turn into an MMA podcast. saw this MMA yeah. talk, guys. We don't know. <laughs> no, I don't want to like, I don't want to. Jiu-jitsu. You guys, would, you guys wouldn't know. No, I didn't need <laughs> it like that. Basic jiu-jitsu, guys. <laughs> we're going to end up spending two hours talking about running in jiu-jitsu. You know? I, didn't mean it. I didn't mean it like nobody's going to understand. I meant it like this is not, the podcast is not a fucking, it's, it's a bodybuilding podcast. So let's just move on. <laughs> Not anymore. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, Mike's gonna be Mike's gonna be box, boxing. Me and Paul are doing MMA, and Ian's running. So we fucking. But yeah, we luckily, got everything. But, but luckily, this is just bro chat. It's not bodybuilding, so we can just talk about whatever hmm. the fuck we want to talk about. Yeah, yeah. We're well-rounded athletes. Uh, <laughs> well, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, That's icing my shoulder here, my back. <laughs> yeah. Um. So Ian, the running's going well. Yeah. No, we did our first. Went out to the club that I used to run with when I was like competitive in high school. We went on Monday, did our first day there. 
Are you still friends with all those guys, or did they know you were like? Was it comfortable? Yeah, yeah. So like, I I, I uh, DM them on Instagram before I was coming and just be like, hey, this is kind of where I'm at. Like my bodybuilding career, and you know, want to get in some different kind of shape and stuff. Blah blah blah. And the guy that runs the Instagram page is a guy that was like a one of the throwing coaches back in the day when I was like competing there. Mm-hmm. So he knew me and like, even, you know, when I've placed well at the Olympia one shows, like they'll go on their page and repost and say, congrats to former Ottawa line. Like we still kept in touch and they all follow my career and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I talked to them and the guy, the group that I'm with is like mostly like grad students. So like master students and stuff like that. Um, and then there's like a couple of people that are a little bit older, like, but no, no, there's only one lady older than us. Um, but the rest of the kids are all, are all younger than us. Um, is it yeah, we on Monday, we did a full, full two hour practice, man, full fucking two hours of it. Is that your first time? Like your first full practice? That that was my first time going period. Yeah. Um, and we did, yeah, did the full two hours. It was fucking, it was hard, man. Real hard. Melissa with me too. We both did it. We both, we signed up for the club for an entire year. So I'm committed for a year. Yeah. That's what me and Paul did. We signed up for six months. We're like, fuck it. Yeah. We're going yep. in. Yeah. Yep. That's a, so hey, I, saw, I saw that picture of you and Melissa. You guys look happy as fuck running. Yeah, man. We had, we, honestly, it was, it was a lot of fun. Eh? You had fun. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun, man. It was really challenging, but like such a completely different challenge than I put my body in in so long. Yeah. Um, and surprisingly, honestly, I was, I went to bed that night. I'm like, man, I'm going to be so fucked up tomorrow. And I woke up. I'm honestly feel completely fine. Like my knees and ankles are completely fine. Like, I can tell my hips are a little tight, like my hips and lower back are like a little bit tight, Yeah, but like nothing real, like bad, you know? Um, I think the big thing that helped me that she didn't have is I went out and bought like really, really like high end running shoes before you need them, you know, yeah. like really good supportive shoes with like a carbon plate, and like really like good shoes before, yeah. um, which, which helped my knees and my ankles stuff a lot where she was still running and, you know, like running shoes, regular like, like Nike running like, shoes, like New Balance or Nike regular shoes. She's ordered some now, some good ones, but you can tell the difference those fucking make, man. Because like I'm way heavier than her, and she was definitely still better, and more competent at running than I am right now. Uh, and she she's having some pain in her like shins and ankles that I'm not having. Yeah, when I started jogging last year, because uh, my brother had already run a half marathon, he told me he's like, dude, you can't. He's like, yeah. those, those Nike running shoes are not going to cut it. You got to go get and fucking I, a pair. And of I knew with like. You know, obviously with the experience I do have in running a bit, like, especially with my weight, I'm um, like, I can't go out there and like my fucking, you know, air maxes or whatever the yeah. fuck they are. You know what I mean? Like I got to go and get a proper pair of shoes and, you know, something that can support me and has like proper arch support and everything. Cause like, yeah. obviously since I got heavy, my arch is like completely flat now. Like I used to have pretty high arches and it's just like now, you know, yeah, yeah. like I just need a little more support and shit that can like, actually like handle my weight and like keep me so I'm not fucking my ankles and knees up, you know? Yeah. Well, I noticed my shin splints and my knee pain and my hip like my hips would cramp i noticed all that went away didn't go yeah. away but like it got exponentially better when i got fucking a good pair of running shoes yeah, yeah so that, that whatever, big... huh? ahead, whatever we run at the gym who had on the treadmill my fucking shins and calves cramp up within five minutes yeah yeah, yeah so... you got to get a, a good pair of running shoes maybe. yeah no like i i was completely fine like my knees ankles everything feel really good um like I said, a little tightness in the hips, but that's obviously just from putting them through ranges of motion that they hadn't been. So I think it's just those muscles like really high in my hip from like getting my knees up higher than they'd probably been in a real long time, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, that's probably what I'm feeling the most, but we're going back out tomorrow. So we're going to be going Mondays and Thursdays to start. Um, that group goes out four days a week together, but I obviously can't do four days a week right now. So yeah. I'm like getting on the spin bike and doing a little bit of weight still, but um, so we'll do Mondays and Thursdays and that gives me enough time to recover. And then we'll, as we go, then we'll add in a third day, add in a fourth day, kind of see how it goes. Oh, I want to, mm-hmm. I want to come back to all this cause we're all doing something a little different, but, uh, I wanted to just touch on this really quickly out of respect. So Neil Curry passed away for those of you who haven't heard yet. Neil Curry was a hostile athlete. Um, he passed away, uh, on the weekend. He was found on Monday, I believe. If I get any facts wrong, please don't kill me because there's a lot of different facts being thrown around. I know uh, Milos put out a statement saying he took his own life, but I've heard otherwise that it was just a an overdose. So I don't know if it was an overdose on purpose or an overdose just by chance or what it was. So I don't want to speculate as to which one it was, but I would I would caution those who are reading all of the different news stories if that's what you want to call them to be careful because there's only a couple of people that actually know the real truth of it so um i don't think anybody 
has actually put out an, uh, a statement from the people closest to him about what happened. Um, but just to uh, talk about Neil really quick, uh, I wasn't very close with him on a friend basis because he was in the UK and we didn't get a chance to spend a lot of time together. We spent some time together at the Olympia. Um, one of the greatest guys ever. Tons of energy, super nice to everybody, very humble, a work ethic like you wouldn't believe. He would take on any challenge. Um, Becky, his girlfriend, ex-girlfriend, I'm not sure which it is at this point, but uh, very sweet girl. They were great together. Uh, ben was his coach. Ben's pretty broken up about all of it right now, and so is Becky, obviously. So if you uh, want to send Ben a DM, just see how he's doing. But uh, on a on a larger conversation about this, one of the things I want to ask you guys is if you've had anybody close to you die, because me and Paul have talked about this sometimes. If you've had anybody close to you die, do you feel like there's a certain way you have to deal with it or do you feel weird for dealing with it? Not like the traditional way people deal with it because like, and for example, just to explain what I mean, my mourning process has become very different from what it was like after my, because the, the first important person in my life that passed was my father. And then after that, it was Luke. And then it kind of went from there and I have, I've had like three or four or five people pass since then in the last like three years. And I feel like my, outlook on death and my mourning process has changed dramatically from the first to the fifth. So do you guys have any experience with that or any thoughts on that? No, I mean, I think the first thing is like, like there is no like right way to mourn or grieve or process or like, you know, I think everyone <laughs> has their own process and, you know, you see it like thrown around so much, like, especially in the celebrity world when like something will happen, they'll be like, He's taking pictures of a celebrity and they're like, he doesn't even look sad, but it's like, yeah. you don't know what the fuck this person's feeling. You know what I mean? Like right. you can't yeah. just judge off of what someone looks like at one moment of a day or, you know, it's a snapshot or, or how they're grieving or how they're processing something could be completely different. You know, some even, but people might sit there and cry for months and weeks and days and all day. And some people, you know, don't process it and, and grieve in the same way. So, you know, I think uh, everyone does what's right to them and what helps them move through it. And uh, I think you can't really judge or, or, look at anybody else and think it's right or wrong. I think everyone's just different in how they process these kind of things. You know, you know, it feels weird to me is uh, my mom, not, not a lot of people know this, but my mom passed away in February and I like went right back to work. Like yeah. the fuck, like the next day I was like, okay, what do we have to do? Like, let's just go back to work. And it was like, yeah. it was very fucking strange. It's somewhere deep inside me. I knew it was wrong, but I'm like, why is it wrong? And how do I change it? And I didn't know how to change it. I don't think it's like wrong. Good. I'm sure it's you, you felt. felt. Yeah. Go ahead. You felt. Sorry, Mike. Go ahead. It's just it's what you felt, right? There's yeah. like Ian said. There's no right way to deal with it. And some people like you need to get back on track as to what as to living your life. But it doesn't mean that you don't mourn. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you could be sitting there a week later, or two weeks later, and be like, it hits you. Do you know what I mean? You're like yeah. a fuck. Like yeah. That, just, that is these people, there's no way. There's no one way to act, right? Like I had a bad experience when. Darren passed away. I mean, Darren, not many people know. We weren't cool when he passed away. We were we were fighting. We used to fight a lot. Like, we butt heads a lot. We had similar personalities and pretty stubborn. So when I found out about his passing, I was like, it was extra hard because it was like, I hadn't, Yeah, I had, we had left things on such bad terms. Like, they weren't bad. Like, we weren't fucking physically fighting. We were just being idiots and not talking to each other. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, man, like, why the fuck am I... Yeah. I wasted all this fucking time being mad at this guy. I didn't even get to see anything. If I had been there at the end, I think I could have, I think I could have maybe prevented how he passed because it passed in a really fucked up way yeah. with really horrible people around him. So it's like, I just think if I had been there, that's the kind of remorse I feel like. I feel like I could have maybe not stopped it, but at least intervened and been like, hey man, like we need to get you somewhere quickly instead of just like, oh, it's going to be cool. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 yeah that's like yeah. i mean everybody deals with it in, in different ways I and mean, i'm the same way as you like when stuff like that happens i don't sit around and yeah and feel sorry for myself or yeah or yeah. like more and like in terms of that i'm just going to keep doing what i'm doing and it'll come it'll wave it'll wash over you as it's supposed to it right comes, yeah. yeah it's very it's very it's very strange because sorry paul go ahead no i, was gonna say, I know what you're talking about though because i've had like a couple of nephews pass and i didn't go through that mourning process that i was expecting and yeah. i felt guilty about it afterwards like am i cold or something that's like, how i feel me? yeah 
Yeah, that's yeah. how I feel. So it's like it's very strange because like um so I do a lot of driving, a lot of road trips and shit. And a lot of time on those trips, I'll be thinking about these people, whether it be Cedric or John or Luke or my mom or my dad or whoever it may be. And it's strange because I think about them a lot. But then I feel like you said, I feel the guilt because I'm like, I haven't wept. And it's like, yeah, but the thing is, they still the, they still live with live on with you in your heart. Right. Right. So right. the fact that you think about them constantly and you're honestly thinking about like cool things that happened or memories yeah. you have with them, they live on that way. That's a process of mourning as well. It's not like it's not sitting in a dark room crying and being inconsolable. But, that's, but I think that's, that's what, what you that's what yeah. your traditional thought yeah. of mourning is somebody who's just devastated and crushed and can't move. So you think if you don't pray, feel that, I would pray wrong. if I passed away and no one acts like that. That's what I'm thinking. I actually said that to Summer. I was like, you know what? I'd be like, don't act like that. Just be like, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. <Just> go back. <laughs> or he's an asshole. Fuck him. <laughs> Can I tell you, you know, one, of the, one of the things I, and, and I'm sure, I'm sure I'm wrong about this, but one of the things I, I don't like, and I, I've seen it a lot in the bodybuilding world is when someone passes away, everybody makes a video, right? Every yeah. news, every news channel, every YouTube channel, every Instagram page will make it's like a video. what? What isn't content, guys? Like, where do we draw the line of like? Yeah, and, and that's you're making like, content for about something you don't know. Like, yeah, the yeah. sentiment is is nice. Don't get me wrong. Like, yeah. it's nice right. for I'm sure their family to see videos and hear people saying these great things. But also, it's like it's a private thing, right? Like, if you don't have never met the guy, that's what I'm trying. And to you're say. not really like in his circle. You have no business speaking on him you can w give condolences and say i'm really sorry to hear this but like yeah. making these lengthy videos and like so and so really like this and that but you don't even know yeah. the person to say right. that they like this or that like right. yeah right. there's something weird about that though eh? you know like people come out of the woodwork and act like they knew this person so well but people who know know that they really didn't you know that's what it's weird that's kind of what i'm saying it's like it's like I, I started this conversation about neil by saying i knew him through work we hung out a couple times but like he wasn't a very close person to me i just want to pay my respects but i feel like some of these channels just it's exactly what mike said it's just content it's like yeah. oh oh this will give me this will give me something like like people can watch this yeah. and i'm like why you like you know it's strange i don't really i try not to do any of that shit like if it's somebody i know obviously but like you know what like for example like my my mom or dad's like my dad's passing now because my dad passed I don't, know, uh, I don't know, 15, 15 years, ago. years ago. Yeah, something like that. So I don't put like a picture on Instagram. Like it, it's my dad's anniversary of his passing. Like I don't, like I kind of like just keep that shit to myself. And so yeah. like you guys said, everybody's different. So I'm not saying everybody should do that. But at the same time, I'm mm -hmm. like, I just don't understand if you don't, if you don't know the person, then like, why are you going out of your way to like make videos and make content and like try and dig up dirt? And like, I, I just don't, or like message the if you know the person like say someone someone that you know pass and the other people know you like write a private message to the guy and be like hey man like i'm really sorry to hear about what happened and yeah like that means more than you being like oh man like video number seven here we're talking about so and so like yeah 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 anyway um did you guys did any of you have a chance to meet neil at all or no i did remember last year at the olympia we hung out that's right that's right at the gun range and i neil's a very very nice guy yeah, he's a great. He's so fucking. He's just full of fucking energy, man. The guy was like, yeah. and he, he was. He was. I, just, I never personally met him, but we did, you know, chat here and there on Instagram, and he was always like, <clears throat> you know, whenever shit was like going on, or you know, like when I'd be posting about stuff, you know, or like we're talking on the podcast about like mental health shit, or whatever. He was always someone that would reach out, or you know, like after New York Pro, kind of, you know, when I had that shit going on, he was like one of the people that reached out. Mm -hmm. Or even when it was like good stuff going on, you know, like when it was like positive stuff, you'd always be someone that was some semi congratulations and yeah, uh, was always a very sincere person. So I appreciate mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Uh, all right, I, I'm not really sure how to segue from that, so we'll just <laughs> it's kind of a tough, tough subject, but we'll move on from it. I just want to pay my respects and hope that uh, Becky and Ben are doing okay. And um, yeah, just be careful what you're listening to and who you're believing and and all that because it's not not all of it's accurate. Anyway. Um, so last week we had Italy. Yeah. Good show. Which was yeah. an amazing show. Probably I'd say like one of the deepest shows of the, of the year. One of the deepest lineups. Definitely up there. And everyone came in in fucking good shape, man. Like it was a good shape. Everyone was in good condition. I got to give it the live stream was fucking really good quality. 
Yeah. Uh, they, put, they put on a good promotion there for sure. You know what I found strange about the live stream, though? They just put the camera in one spot and didn't move it. Yeah. Is, is at times, still... they'd be too zoomed in, so you couldn't even see the guys on the end. Sometimes it'd be like, there's five guys or six guys, and you could like just see half of them. Um, but they would go back and forth. But yeah, it was just a, a stationary camera, yes. So Did by... they have anyone commentating? No. The confusion, no. the confusion to me was the show looks like it was very well set up. Like it, it looked like a very well run show and like they spent a lot of money. So I'm like a camera guy can only be like a few hundred bucks. Yeah. Like all you have to do is like pay, pay somebody a few hundred bucks to man. Yeah, but in that breath too, like all you really need to see for a bodybuilding show is straight on. You know what I mean? No, but like you said, like you couldn't see the people on the outside of the fucking. Yeah. That was just it. whoever yeah. was controlling the zoom was fucking it up here and there. They would zoom in and out, but, um, but you know, I, I get it now. I'm just complaining to complain. I'm not really complaining because I actually know because it, it could be improved. Absolutely. No, because somebody said that. And I was like, you know, at, at the time when they said that, I said, well, it's cool that we get to watch anyways, yeah. because at least there was a fucking live stream to watch. So, mm. so that's nice. Um, I ran smoothly and the quality was good, but yeah, they could have definitely worked on the camera, camera work. Yeah. So we need authentic Italian commentators on it. Cause it'd be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> look, look at this fucking guy holy <laughs> fuck <laughs> I did uh, that'd be awesome I did see some comments about the show I did see some comments about the show and uh, some people are saying Regan got robbed and I, I'm like absolutely. I haven't, I haven't been on social yeah. media too much because I had a crazy weekend away but like I know we were talking in a group chat and I thought all of us kind of agreed that Nathan was a clear winner Look, Regan looked good. You could see the improvements in his size and muscularity, but uh, Nathan was just on, man. Like, he was – you see some of those HD pictures. He was fucking hard as granite. Yeah. He's very dense, very muscular. Like, you know, it, there wasn't a lot of shit you could say negative about him in that show, you know. Like, he looked really fucking good, and it was a very deserved win. He got a perfect score on the scorecard, as he should have, you know. To mm. me, to me, the the show was more between second and third. Yeah, I, I, thought, so I thought I thought Regan and and Roman should have been compared, compared more. Yeah, and I actually did, and I actually think had Roman Roman's posing went backwards a little bit, I think if his posing was a little better, I mean, who knows? He could have beat Regan. Yeah. So I and yeah. I mean, like, was, you know, obviously I, Roman's conditioning was definitely superior, but Regan is obviously a bigger, more muscular guy, um, especially up top. But yeah, I mean, you know, Nathan was just fucking. I don't even think it speaking, was. A discussion there, you know. Speaking of solely Regan for a second, I did not see the level of improvement that I thought we would see via, like, based on Instagram photos. Well, it's mm -hmm. tough to say because it's hard to display improvements in muscularity when the conditioning isn't quite there to match, you know. And I think he, you could definitely, I could definitely see he was bigger. Um, I could see in some of his shots, you know, in some of the front shots, the back shots, side shots, that there was more muscle there. And I know he was heavier. Um, you know, I know he was like upwards in the high 260s. So like, he, you know, he definitely has more muscle. But you, the conditioning needed to be there to match, especially when Nathan was fucking hard as granite um, mm -hmm. to show off that new muscle. You know, like you need to be in the kind of condition to display that new muscularity. And I think that's one of the things people have been craving from Regan is not necessarily to be bigger, which obviously will help, um, but to see a really good peaked physique, you know. So I want to I want to disagree with you a little bit. So I do think you're right about the conditioning. Like, for sure, that's what people want to see from Regan. But one of the things I'll disagree about is, I feel like he was just a bigger version of his old self. Well, that's he what I'm saying. He, yeah, but he didn't. But that's not what people like. That's not what he needed. I feel like no, Regan, I'm agreeing with you there. Yeah, I feel like what Regan needed was more density in his limbs. Yeah, and all we got was a bigger version of the same Regan. So it was like more torso. And still but not that's, more. Not that's kind of the sentiment I'm saying in terms of when it's hard to really see that new muscularity. Maybe yes, because it's kind of just evenly dispersed in the yeah. same. It's just, yeah. um, and then yeah. the condition is, isn't there to really highlight that bit of new muscularity and maybe yeah. a little bit new, newer, uh, new density there is there. Um, you know, with with it not being a super hard dry physique yet, uh, you, you can't really see that to the the level that it may be. You know, Mike, you worked yeah. with him pretty closely for. I don't know how long before the show, but did you think the stage was a the stage look was a good representation of what you saw, or did something go wrong? You think in his last week of peak or something like that? I even saw a picture of him the night before, and he looked. I, I don't I can't tell whether it's. 
like obviously it, you don't know with lighting and all this stuff, but it just looked like something happened between that that night night before and going on stage. And I yeah. know that he, I believe he had an issue with like the tan, something to do with the tan, which is not going to affect your conditioning. But I think like maybe the effort to really pack him and push out that physique was maybe a bad call and maybe mm-hmm. just Too full. keep him a little keep him a little little size down and more conditioned. Cause I think that like, like the goal, cause you get in this trap of wanting to show people improvement. You want to like push at the end to show this like massive improvement. Right. But it's yeah. like, you're mm-hmm. not going to fill more than you can fill right. and people. And it's like we talked about before. There's a curse. There's a blessing and a curse of being such a well proportioned, beautiful physique. You don't have body parts that stand out. Right. 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 Like he has a back that stands out, but now sadly the back is taking over so much that the chest is lagging yeah, yeah. But like the chest looks good on on side shots and it holds up high but when he hits the front double it's yeah it's gone right because that yeah. and i noticed when i trained him it's only trained him a handful of times before he went to italy and i've obviously been training milos and doing this thing and i trained him prior to him going to milos and i and he was always like a more of a rigid guy and it seems like he's gotten into this into this pattern of like again the heavy weight is going to add the mass i need Mm -hmm. so i'm just going to heavy weight the fuck out of everything and then it comes down to like gripping too much getting too tense and just rocking because i would when i would set him on back i noticed as soon as he picked up weight he was hunching here and his head would be back like this Mm -hmm. so everything would be bracing on the back and he just couldn't get out of these positions where like even if he pulled right his head would be up like this yeah you know what I mean so it's just like the chest is not moving the rib cage is not moving the back's just moving because it's powerful and it's rocking around the body right so I was trying to cue maybe, him on that but I mean what can I do but maybe that's why he made the improvements he made is because he was just using weight so it just evenly distributed through everywhere and he yeah because he's so actually... he's so gifted from head to toe it's like yeah. it just spreads out where it should yeah, it wasn't targeting so like, anything directly. It's yeah. like I said to you guys when I when I kind of said before, he's just he's a bigger version of of Regan. Yeah, w- yeah. which is what he was. He was just a yeah. bigger version of a awesome physique that's like very balanced and proportioned. Mm-hmm. But it's almost like Ian said, like you almost wonder if he has to like disproportionately start attacking those arms and chest to get that physique to really pop. Because you see him on stage next to Nathan, who's got like body parts, man. Like yeah. Yeah, that yeah. chest is that chest is not normal. No, no. Uh, yeah. like, that is not a normal chest, dude. And those arms are jacked, and like the his back upper, is good. His whole yeah. upper shelf, like chest, arms, delts, it's just like a fucking balloon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so full, it looks like he's gonna explode. Paul, before we move off of Reagan, uh, what did you think? Did you get you a like, chance? Oh, you were you were judging, but you've seen pictures since then, right? I saw pictures, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I think Regan, yeah, um, like he's got a big frame. You know, he's a big guy, and it just hasn't filled out all the way yet. I think right. for me, particularly his quads. Yeah, I think uh, if he had like uh, that, that's where I would. If I was, you know, Regan's coach, whatever, that's what I would target is put more meat on those quads for next year. Because I think with crazy legs, man, that's a there's a, he's got a crazy physique and it flows so well. But the quads just aren't freaky. They're not crazy, you know, especially to sweep. My opinion of of Regan's physique has always been like the torso is the most dominant part. I know he needs a thicker chest, but it takes up the most area, and it's mm-hmm. almost like the arms and the legs just don't have the density to match this torso. Yeah, mm. um, but he's got crazy hamstrings. Well, we, uh, where, when you look at Nathan, he's almost the opposite. It's kind of like a small torso yeah. with like just bubbles yeah. of yeah. Like chest, yeah. arms, legs, like just bubbles off the torso. You know, yeah. Yeah. I mean, even yeah. if you even if you look at Blessing, I mean, his legs mm-hmm. look be- look better in this shot than they looked in the live stream. But even if you look at Blessing when he pulls this vacuum, his torso looks proportionate with his arms and his legs. Mm-hmm. In in this shot only, not normally. Normally, his legs were a little bit down at the show, but I feel like for Regan to really like stand out and achieve his potential the limbs just gotta overpower the torso i agree um okay so back to nathan i heard some people say that they thought he was smaller than the last time on stage but i thought he looked phenomenal like same size if not bigger like denser yeah everything was fucking blasting full dry as hell well look at there's that one front lat shot like that's in or front double front lat that's in like hd uh, no, it's like it's an individual picture. It's not in the group. Well, let's just go through these for now. Oh, go there, below it. Close that. Okay. Close that, and then right below. Like, go to, you know, you passed them, but. No, no, there was only a front double, though. I'm seeing if there's like another. Oh, I was just seeing the, the just a close-up of him like that. Oh, I wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me see here. 
There's a front lat, like close up. Yeah. I mean, look at the texture of his skin. Like, go back to that front yeah. double. Go yeah. Back paper. To front. Like, look at the texture of his skin on his chest, his abs, yeah. his lats, his arms, yeah. his legs. Like, it looks like you couldn't pinch a millimeter of skin on there. You know, yeah. Yeah. he's so dry. He's so hard, clean, vascular, full as a house. Like, look at that. He's so hard and full, man. That's this ridiculous. Is this is all fucking crazy. Yeah. Here. yeah. Like, that is yeah. conditioning. You know, like he's hard, dry, fucking full, full. but not spilled even a little bit. No. You know? Just, just the right amount of fullness. Perfectly hard and dry with just bursting fullness. You know, he's working with uh, Boss of Outlaw. Who is? Does anybody know that guy's name? Yeah, uh, I, uh, I can't remember his actual name, but German guy works with. Yeah. I think like Wurz and a couple other guys work with him too. I think a is lot it? of the German guys work with him, uh, like Tim Budesheim and those guys. Uh, but he does great work, man. This guy's actually a, a coach. I think in the next few years, going to make a bigger name for himself in the North American circuit. So Nathan's got ten wins now, and yeah. I'm pretty sure he's going on to Spain. We'll yep. cover we'll cover Spain in a minute, but so he's got ten wins, qualified for the O. But the question is, can he get to the O? I Find hear yeah, I hear I hear, I hear yes. I also hear no. So I don't know like what what the yep, truth yep. is. But has he got charges or something? Yeah, I guess so. I don't know exactly which ones, but I know there was something during COVID. Like he had his gym open, and they tried to make him close his gym, and he didn't want to. And then I think something from that uh, he got charged for something from that, or I don't know if it's something before, but. Um, or if he's got that all cleared up now, I don't know. I don't know, but uh, he hasn't been able to get to the Olympia the last few I years. Hope so. he can, though. I'd love to see him in that lineup. Yeah, he could shake up that top six or so. Before, before we jump off of Nathan, if he – well, actually, I actually was just going to ask you that, Paul, because I don't know if I would go that far. Where do you think he plays? Well, somewhere Olympia? around there. I don't know. That's what I was just thinking in my head. I'm going to ask you this in my Q&A. I think he falls somewhere in like the 7 to 10. You know, I, I think him. he could be, be – I think he could beat someone like Crizo – um, and I think he could be, you know, I think he might have a tough time beating Hunter, but I think he could fall kind of in that same call out, you know. I got him in nine ten. Yeah, really. So I, could, I, well, because I think think about, somewhere in there. Just think about it. We have a top five that's pretty solid, right? Then you got uh Andrew, Hunter, Crizo. That puts you at eight, nine, ten. Eight. Yeah, I think he can beat Crizo. That's where I think he'd be in that mix. I think he'd and be in that know, mix. And right I don't there. know. Well, I think he will pose with them. But I don't know if he can like he can't. I don't think he can beat Andrew. I think I'm pretty sure Hunter yeah. could beat him if he's in if he's in the right kind of condition. Yeah, yeah. that would be the, that would be the best comparison. I think is honestly yeah. a Hunter. You know, yeah. <laughs> I think that Nathan has a little more pop. Well, the reason like, I'm, but, like like, like body that, part of pop and fullness to him. Sorry, go ahead, Mike. go ahead, Mike. Sorry, you see that picture of Brandon Curry? Yeah. Yes. I was gonna yeah. Go, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go there in a minute. Don't worry. Your buddy Abdullah. So, if you go. If you go Nathan Hunter, but you look at how Nathan just beat Regan, Hunter doesn't have those issues. So I don't know if Nathan can beat Hunter. Like Hunter's Big. a much a Hunter's a much more muscular, bigger guy. As long as he's in condition, I don't know if Nathan can beat Hunter. Look, I think I think that Hunter can certainly beat him in some back shots, but I think in the front shots, I'm definitely giving an edge to to Nathan. A lot of those with his front arm, dub, front double, lat. front lat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm definitely giving an edge on some of those. I I do think Hunter has better quads. Better side, um, better side, side, chest, side chest, side chest too, with those arms and that chest fullness, the side leg detail. Um, that's a good comparison. That's one I'd really That'd be like a really good see. comparison. I like to see yeah, that. I, yeah. I see him falling somewhere like yeah, in the seven to nine. You know, depending on how other guys show up, I think yeah, he yeah. can. I think Crizo is definitely bigger um, and can hold his own, and obviously in terms of muscular. But I think he's not nearly as complete as Nathan. I think he's still lacking in the back department, the glutes and hamstrings. Um, and Nathan's a lot more balanced and Nathan, especially from the back, his conditioning is, is definitely superior from what we've seen in Crizo in the past. So um, I personally would have him ahead of Crizo, um, but we don't know until we see him on stage together. I'd obviously. have to see him together, but the only place yeah. I see Nathan beating Crizo is lower body in the back, lower body on the back half. Yeah. I don't see him beating him. He's a lot nicer shape too, especially in those front shots. Like, you know, Crizo is definitely bigger. Um, but I think how his lats kind of tie into his his waistline and how his everything's kind of shaped, I, I don't think it flows nearly as nice, even though he is bigger per se. You know? Yeah, it's one we'll have to see. You're right. I'll give you that seven to ten. It's probably accurate. So anyway, going back to Italy. So Roman was third. I thought Roman could have potentially been second, but good for fucking Roman for getting in, walking in off the couch and taking third. Yeah, because uh, he didn't he didn't even want to compete. He was like, yeah, I'm just bored. So I'm going to do a show. <laughs> he's doing Spain too. <laughs> and fucking crazy Roman. Yeah. That guy's he's, crazy. Yeah. He's awesome. There's so only, congr- only one Roman. So congratulations to Roman. Um, blessing. 
No, nope. I, gotta, I gotta ask you something. Nope. Blessing oh, no, was no, no, Blessing was in fourth. That's right. Uh, the Asian Yang guy. Yang was Lian, Lian Yang. Yeah. So, so he was just soft, Yan, or what? Who? I thought he was. Yan. Yeah. I didn't I see too many pictures of him. Well, his condition wasn't terrible. He's just a. His condition was pretty solid. He's very muscular. Uh, he's just a. He's a very compact physique. You know, when you're putting him next to guys that take up a little more space on stage, like you know, he he obviously has a lot of muscle. But he's narrow in the clavicles. He's shorter. He's a little more squat and compact. And it's it's just not a physique that even if it looks awesome on its own, that your eyes are necessarily drawn to when you put it with guys that take up a little more space, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's, all, it's almost like an overall but his lineup. His condition could be improved for sure. Like he wasn't obviously as hard as Nathan or as uh, a Roman, but I think his condition was certainly comparable to Regan. Yeah. I personally thought if his conditioning was better, he could have challenged for some higher spots. I agree. He was a, a ball of fucking muscle, very complete, uh, but not just a ball of muscle like slot. This is obviously I'm showing Roman here, but no, he flows uh, nicely. Yeah, he flows nicely even being that. And stack. he crunches, he crunches the abs down on the front double that looked really good. You know, I wonder where is there any shots of is, him anywhere? Is he like so? He is he under two twelve? No, he was like two forty, man. Really? How short is he? Like five five? I don't know. There he is. Well, yeah, yeah. It's I mean, I guess. His condition's okay. I just feel like there's a film. Like I don't know if it's like yeah, it I doesn't look it doesn't look like water to me. Yeah. It looks like he still it's has not a, sharp, sharp. It looks like he has can a couple go, more can, weeks can of we go to, Can we go to his Instagram and see like some tag pictures on his is it him? One sec. Oh my god, my fucking dog, man. Shut up, man. <laughs> there's a video of some round ass muscle there. See what I mean? It's almost like He's conditioned, but he like he looks like he has a couple more weeks to go still. Yeah, especially in the abdominals, there, right? Like all the no, chest a little it, bit. It, it, to me, it's everywhere. Like there's just a film. Yeah. Like, Let's see. Keep going. Let's just play the whole thing. Let's see. See what I mean? Like the, yeah. stri- the separation here is not deep. Like nothing. None of it mm-hmm. is. Yep. None of it's really sep- of separated. Like this, the quad. Like there's there's separation there, but it's not deep. Like I feel his like quads actually look harder than his upper body. I feel like with, mm-hmm. with somebody with this much muscle, like I feel like you just need to bring it all the way down and show it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. It looks like he needs to come down a yeah, little like, bit more. There's just all of this is like it's almost there, but it's not. Do you, you think there's a little more body yeah. fat to come, or do you think this is just a peak? Because he look his body fat looks reasonably. Oh no, you can see a little bit. No, there, no, but... I I think it's body fat. I think yeah, I think there's a little, a little bit yeah. of body fat there. Yeah. Remember yeah. I told remember I told you there's like a time where you feel like you're shredded, and then there's like another yep. level. Yeah, see, like yep. you can see on his hamstring, his yeah, lower see his ass, yeah. inner glute there, yeah, lower all... back. If you see his lower back there a bit, for sure. Yeah. All so yeah, he's got good. another couple, like you know, three to four pounds to pull off of fat, and then that'll make him drier as well. So now I don't know if that would that means you would have beat Roman, but I don't know. I just mean it would have compared a lot better. That's for sure. But good. Yeah, hats, moved him up. Hats off to the judges too, because he was not in that initial group, and they let him like. They obviously saw him in the second call out. They saw he was good. They gave him his chance next to Blessing, and he worked his way up from fifth into fourth, you know? you know. Yeah, that I, was Jack. Jack, yeah. You know who I thought uh, looked good but didn't get a look was um, Tim. Buddha, yeah. Buddha, the, the problem with Tim is he, his, posing, no, his, posing like, is, his posing is not good. His posing, yeah. but, like, he's very dense and he's very conditioned, but everything is very – like compact inwards you see what i mean so like his lats don't flare out a lot from his waistline like yeah but, he, but wait one sec sorry ian let me just interrupt for one second part of that like you see where his shoulders are mm-hmm. yeah that's he's, the posing thing he's but i also he's think literally it, I mean, lifting his shoulders all the way up yeah, yeah i think it isn't it isn't i think it could be improved but i also think that is how his physique is in a way too you know i think he's I mean, not yeah. a very wide guy through the clavicles and through the lats and i think he's just a narrower guy well hold on though i'm not saying i think he would have won but i think he if his like when i was watching the live feed the live stream he i felt like he looked very uncomfortable getting into his poses yeah and a lot of them were like just needed to be tweaked and i'm like Maybe he could have beat Blessing is all I'm saying. Like, it's p- potentially, you know what I mean? He definitely has a very good level of muscularity, and his conditioning is always exceptional. You know, like, he's yeah. known for being really hard like that. I feel like he was just doing I mean, he's saying a, he worked with that boss of Outlaw guy as well. Yeah, yeah. I felt like he just did himself a disservice in the way he was posing. He kind of, like, poses really small and yeah. crunch, crunched together. But yeah, he needs to kind of just, like, open everything up a bit more, you know? I felt like he could have moved up. But congratulations <laughs> to Blessing, anyway, for coming back better. Mm-hmm. Do you think, definitely improving conditioning? Yeah. 
one of the things I wanted to ask you, Ian, or anybody who wants to answer, do you guys think uh, they tried to push the conditioning too far? Because he looked a little flat to me. I think he was on the flat side for sure. Um, But his conditioning was improved and his hardness was improved. But I think even if he'd been a little fuller, I think he just still needs more on those legs to really – especially against the guys like that, you know, like Yang or whatever his name is, has really fucking big quads. Roman's got big quads. And I think that he has a lot of tools, but there's definitely an imbalance there. And I think like, you know, he put up a video and saying that he lost a lot of his quads from that, but we've seen him in other shows and we know that, you know, the quads are obviously his biggest weak point. Um, So yeah, maybe they would have had a little more fullness, but do I think they would have looked 50% better? Absolutely not. What's the issue with his left quad? Why is it so atrophied? Yeah, I'm not sure. It looks like there might be a knee issue or something there, I think. Um, but, you know, obviously for him to really start winning shows like this and to moving up in placings and being competitive at the Olympia, those legs need to make a significant improvement, obviously, you know. Um, yeah. One last question about Italy before we move on. Uh, I felt like the lighting was the opposite of most shows in that it made you look worse the darker you were. Really, and I don't know if that's a, I don't know if, I don't know if that's a really showed or... people's conditioning well, but I think if you were darker, it kind of did a disservice. Yes, that's what I'm trying to say. Like if you look here, I'll show you. Like if you look at blessing, and I know this is a photo, but the live stream felt the same way. So I don't know if this was different in person, but like blessing looks so dark here, you can't yeah, see. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't show up the same yeah, as that. Yeah, you're right. The live but stream to a, to a point to a point though, because like look, like Regan's tan is obviously too light, and Nathan is pretty dark, and it's working well. So I think you just have yeah. to get the right color, you know. Maybe, yeah. side, it looks like shadows too in their lower bodies when the front shots. Yeah, yeah, you also have to you also have to remember here that blessing is off to the right. He's not center stage, probably where the True. light is the best. Maybe yeah. I noticed. So, I noticed probably noticed in a it, bit darker area there. I noticed it when uh, Buddha sign was on stage as well, but he was also on the right side of the stage. So yeah, maybe he looks okay. crazy, eh, right? Nathan. Yeah, Nathan was nuts. What happened to uh, Theo? You know I mean, though, how he's like kind of like a little narrower, yeah, compact, like you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just look at the muscularity though. He's so balanced. Like yeah, legs, legs are balanced with the upper body. Conditioning is good. It's just, you know, some of his poses. I that mean, looks great. That's great. Like that's a nice shot. He, I don't know, man. It's like mostly, I, mostly where I see it is on his front and back double, where he looks like he's not really open. Well, you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like that looks. Where did he finish sixth? Right behind blessing, I think. Yeah, look at conditioning. Yeah, he's in shape. Awesome. Like I would, I would have had him. I would have had him fifth myself. He would there too, yeah. like on the back double. Like there's not like a lot of like taper from the lats into the waist, you know. But that's but that's a great lat spread. Like that's a great shot. Lat spread's awesome. Yeah, it's it's mostly just yeah, his front and double that I think are the, the hurting poses, you know. Yeah, hmm. he's hard too. He's muscular. Yeah, he's a good bodybuilder, man. Yeah, he is. Uh, okay, so that was Italy. Great show. We have Spain. How many other European shows are coming up? Is that it? I think that's uh, the one, is it? Before the Olympia, is Spain the last one? I'll check. I don't know. So we have Spain coming up. We'll go through the list real quick. Uh, Literally the same lineup plus a few more. Yeah, I just want to just take a look really. Oh, what did we have? Who bet on who at the show? I want a pair of shoes. <laughs> you won? I still got to order my pair. Uh, yeah, we still got to get Ian's shoes, yeah. Well, Paul, you got to get them. I know. Well, I thought you were going to order them, then we're paying you. No, I'll, I'll order them, yeah. All right. Paul, I'll Paul, send you the bill. Paul, okay. <laughs> this is before the lineup changed, so we'll just go with this. Paul said, Nathan, Regan, Blessing, and Vito. I said that? This is... Yeah. yeah. Vito. <laughs> I had Roman in there, I thought. I don't know if I wrote... wrote I think it's the wrong one. Oh, yeah, 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 I got it. Reg- oh, you should have went with the first one, Paul. Uh, Reg- <laughs> Regan, Nathan, Blessing... Roman, uh, Theo, Mu- Theo, and Muzi. That's horrible. Yeah, Theo Muzi let me down. Theo <laughs> Muzi was off. Roman was third. Blessing was fifth. And Nathan won, and Regan was second. You got them all wrong. <laughs> yeah, well, I definitely don't think I'm last place then. <laughs> Ian, Ian had Regan, Nathan, Blessing, Roman, Tim. I'm pretty oh, close. close. Yeah, that's close. Mike, Tim was got- sixth. Mike, you got to get your phone out. I didn't have a t- chance to write yours down. Did you delete it or no? I think I might have. Fuck. Oh, how, how convenient. I had. I'm pretty sure I had all of them right, though. 
<laughs> of course, yeah. I had if Nathan, I remember correctly, I yeah, I, did. I had Nathan Regan, <laughs> Blessing, Roman, Tim. Oh, yeah, so pretty much the same as Ian. You had no, Nathan. First no, time? I had Nathan winning. Oh, oh, so did you? you? Oh, okay. So who had one? Win then, yeah. Well, Mike, did you have Nathan winning? No, I had Regan. Had Regan, you're the only one with Nathan, so you won. Yeah, I want a pair of shoes. Ah, uh, uh, fuck. Paul, Paul, Paul are you, here's the worst. <laughs> Mine's the worst. Yeah. Paul, you're, right. shoes. <laughs> Paul, you're the judge, man. What the fuck? Oh, uh, well, Theo let me down. Theo did let you down. He always lets you down. To answer your third call out. To answer your question, we have Spain, then there's a show in France, and then we have uh, Legion in California, and that's all that's left. That's it. Paul, you got to stop picking people based on their looks. That's your problem. (laughs) (laughs) You're right. Don't pick with your eyes. Pick with your heart. (laughs) I'll keep that in mind next time. No, no. He's like, like, I think think Theo's good looking. He's third. Yeah, he's picking with his (laughs) hungry eyes. Picking with his dick. (laughs) You're picking up up the brunt of the shoes again here with Fuad because you lost it. I know, man. Fuck. I need need a new pair of running shoes. But what happened? Did you see Theo? Ian, what happened? Was he just off or what? No, Theo wasn't off. It was just better guys. Muzi was off. I kind of expected that. No offense to Muzi, but uh, Theo was was good. He just there was guys that were better. Yeah, you know? I think I think he might have been. He was like in the third call. Was he? I thought he was like seventh, oh. eight. I saw something online that he was in the third call. I didn't see where he actually finished though. Paul, there's a problem. The, the problem with Theo is he's got a great physique from the front and side, but his back, back. just does not match the front. Yeah. yeah, I think that's ultimately what keeps holding him back. Yeah, because he's a big guy. Like it's funny because he doesn't look big in photos, but when we stand him on stage, he's actually like structurally yeah, bigger than most guys. Yeah, but his See, back... just conditioning and peak just hasn't been there as of late, and he's just yeah. you know soft through the back and, and and glutes and hams, and and the muscularity is just not quite there in the back to match either. Okay, we're gonna do Spain really quick. Oh. We're not gonna spend a ton of time on it. I want to get to some questions. Well, it's it's almost the same lineup. So we got we got is gonna picking, be. I'm picking who won last week. Yeah, <laughs> exact, exact order. Uh, who's the new? Na- is there any big na- new names that came on here? Robert Bernicka making a comeback. Wait, oh, it, uh, okay, no. What? Um, Vito's not doing this run, right? He's doing Legion. I guess, yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I well, this is silly because we're all we're literally just going to pick the same four in the same order from last week. I'm not. Okay. Well, I am. Paul, go ahead. So, Ian, you're going Nathan. I'm going to go Nathan, Regan, Regan, Roman, Roman, Yang. Yang. Is that even his name? I'm just saying Yang. Is that his it's, name or am I being racist? Yan. I think it's Yan. 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 It's, it's a little it's bit like, racist. I think it's Yan. Nowhere near that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. We don't have blessing though. We don't have blessing, so I got to pick a new fifth. Okay. Yeah, let me show you. This is where the differentiation will be all in the fifth. The guy, who was, the guy well, who was sixth. Tim's in this show, right? Tim, yeah. Uh... Oh, I, how do we think Bruto is going to look? He missed that last show, but I'm I'm not sure his conditioning is quite there yet. It did, no, and the video he put up from the hospital, or whatever, it didn't look conditioned. But I, he okay, was well sick then, yeah, him. then I'm going to go with uh, Dean Robert Br- Robert Bernica is doing this show. Yeah, yeah. Did he just do that master show? How does he look? Do we know? No. Do we want to look? Kinda, yeah. I mean, he's he was good back in the day, wasn't he? Yeah, he was known for like having massive arms. Name? He was a. Uh, I think he did for a bit. Did. Yeah. Well, we looked him up on this once already, actually, when we were talking. I think about he was him. a powerful too. I don't know if he was. Uh, well, I don't want to say anything. Okay. No, you gotta say it now. No, this is Robert. <laughs> He's gonna say he didn't think he was very good. Okay, I, yeah, no, okay, I'll pick... he... uh, yeah. I mean, no, I'll take. I'll pick Tim. I'll pick Tim. It's good. Okay, I, I actually have the same picks as you, Ian. So we're fucked. I think we're all, all the same picks. We should have to pick six, seven, just to break break it up. Okay, oh let's pick tiebreakers. Yeah. Who knows so, the fuck they are? So Yo. <laughs> that's the fun of it, Mike. <laughs> Go back to it. <laughs> One second. We should pick obscure, like ninth, tenth. <laughs> <laughs> let's just go tenth through fifteenth. Yeah, no. let's just pick the first call up, and we'll we'll just pick we'll just pick five. <laughs> Or six, seven, eight, nine. No, just keep going, Mike. Oh you... my God! So, do we all have? <laughs> do we all have the same top five? Yeah. 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 Okay, Tim. Check, okay, check, then check. after that, I'll pick. Uh, Chris is like looking at 
Yeah, I'm gonna pick. <laughs> I'm, after that, I'll pick uh, ba, 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 Theo. Fuck. <laughs> and then I'll pick. God damn it! Took my Theo. pick. <laughs> then, my I'll pick then I'll pick Bruno. Then I'll pick. Uh, Tomas I'm going to back here. I like that name. Go with him. <laughs> then I'll pick. De- then I'll pick Dieter. Then I'll pick Dennis, Dennis Reinhold. So we'll do six, seven, eight. Yeah. Okay, Paul. What the fuck? You have who's after Tim? After Tim's Theo. <laughs> Still the same. <laughs> yep. <laughs> after after Theo. Uh, after Theo, I'm gonna go with. Well, uh, is Muzi not in the show? <laughs> Uh, you no, need to no. give up on Moosey. I like, <laughs> I like Moosey, Mike. I'm not, I'm not giving up on Moosey. I still got to hope I come back one of these shows better. Um, okay, seven, I'm going to go with... Uh, is it Who's the German guy we were looking at last week? Was that Dennis Reinhold? Yeah, that's it. I'm going to go with... Where did he finish at uh, the last show? No, we can't tell you. Go ahead, pick. Come on, you got to tell me. No, pick. Mm. He looked good. He looked good. I thought he did. Okay, I'm going to go with him. And then eighth, I'll go with Bruno. Oh you laughing at? <laughs> <laughs> so Mike. Just flip those. Mike, I just I don't even know. <laughs> just pick a random. Just pick, just a put random. Just pick a random. Random. Uh, fucking. G- so Giovanni, some love from Mexico. <laughs> 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 what, Tomas Tabakier. <laughs> watch them. Watch Mike get it right. <laughs> yeah, uh, Jan Jan Turek. That's not a bad one, actually. Yeah, he's not yeah, bad. I'm going to pick Ali. No, that's it. Jaleen Nesser. That's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. <laughs> I love your uh, Arabic accent with that. Uh, I'm going yeah. uh, Theo, Dennis, and Jan. Okay. So we're all we're all a little bit. Is Wait, Theo... you, you took Dennis with, with the guy that I took? Yeah. I did, too. Well, Ian, you took Dennis in eighth. I took him in seventh. Yeah. Paul so who would you take for eighth foot? Jan. You know, it's funny, but Paul, Paul, you don't even care. You just want to beat me. You don't care. <laughs> you don't care. <laughs> you just want to not be last. You should with the, yeah, should should with the dark horse last. like me. I just want to beat somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I picked Jan Turk. I, I like Jan Turk's physique. He's a little bit, yeah, bottom heavy. A little bit bottom heavy, but I think he's going to nail it one day. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> back to the start. Ian, how is your retirement going? Great. Seriously though, you're run- I know we all know you're running, but like, are you still mentally feel free? Are you enjoying eating? Are you enjoying like? Oh man, I are you feel... going? Are you doing shit with Melissa? Like, what's what's it like? Yeah, look, and I don't want to like anyone to confuse this with me not like loving bodybuilding or thinking that was like making me fucking miserable and like whatever. But you know, I did it for a long, long time, and I'm just excited to do new shit and try new things that I haven't done so far in my entire adult life. You know, um, and I'll always love bodybuilding, and it'll remain part of my life. But yeah, no, I. You know, training just has been fun, like not putting a lot of pressure on myself, going into the gym, kind of doing what feels good and enjoying it, doing the running. Me and Melissa have been doing more shit. Like, I mean, my days feel like I, they feel five times longer with not eating yeah. so much, you know? Yeah. yeah. Like I'm getting up earlier. I'm fucking got so much more time. My productivity's higher. Like, I just feel like my days are like so much probably, longer and more productive, you know? Let me, let me ask you this. Do you feel more productive because you're eating a lot lighter too? Yeah, like you're, not, well, you're not eating as many calories, so you do you feel yeah, yeah. like for sure just more yeah. more energy overall. Yeah, yeah. How, no, much, weight, how much weight are you down? Uh, I went down so like in the first five days, I went down like fourteen pounds, really, and then it's kind of just stayed the same. It actually, it actually went like from two seventy three to like two fifty seven, and then oh, like I looked really flat and like kind of deflate deflated. And then over like the last week or so, my body's kind of adjusted to the food intake I've had. And like now I'm back up to like 259. It's like adjusted fullness wise. Um, Basically, he stopped doing 10 IUs a GH a day and he lost 10 pounds. <laughs> no, I stopped, eating, I stopped eating six meals a day and I dropped 10 pounds. Okay. I do uh, I do have to ask you though, what, yeah. where, what is that side of it going to look for you? Is it you're going to stay on TRT? Or are you going to go all the way off? Like, what are you doing? So I'm going to just go down to like, try and go down to like a real TRT for the next like Paul's TRT, like 600 milligrams like Paul yeah no, four, like, four or 500 like gram you got you're, you're a big guy and you can probably take more than an average person yeah like like 250 <laughs> for well, for now I'm doing 125 milligrams I'm doing 125 milligrams every three days uh and then I'll do blood work in four weeks so six weeks after like I brought it down 
that'll obviously still I'll still be high probably I'm sure at that yeah. that's about yeah. 75 a week I'll yeah. definitely still be high at that uh, and then based off those numbers then I'll make the adjustment from there okay. um, I didn't want to cut too much right because I was coming from a prep I was doing like obviously yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah of course um, so I, I brought that down to that I'll do blood work in four weeks from now see where it is and then I'll adjust from there I'll probably end up doing somewhere like you know, 60, 70 milligrams every three days, you know, like 150 milligrams a week or something. Um, I think I've done that before in the past in an off season, like <laughs> recovery phase, my dog's losing his brains. And like in a recovery phase, like between cycles and preps. Uh, and I felt pretty solid at that. So I'm sure I'll be good there. So I'll kind of bring it to that and see where my blood work is and then adjust if needed. But yeah. So how does, I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about this, but you and Melissa are, are trying to have kids or going to try and have kids. Yep. So how does your, I don't know, forgive me if this is a stupid question, but how do your test levels relate to your output? Yeah. So it obviously it's going to have some impact on it. Um, so I got HCG, HMG, I'm going to do a protocol with those that I got from Ben. Yeah. Um, so I'll follow that for the next couple months, probably like two, three months before I like retest my sperm count. Um, and then based off of what I've seen from that, whether how much it's increased or not increased, then yeah. if at that time I'll make the call of, if I want to cut the test out for a while, um, and just go like, Oh, natural for a bit to let my body have a better chance of like getting the sperm count up. Yeah. Um, and if we're starting to get some good numbers back, then obviously just leave it where it is. Um, but if, if I need to cut it completely for a, a while to get the sperm count up, I'm not opposed to that at all. Um, so yeah, that's the plan. Just doing 500 IUs of HCG alternating days with. 35 or 75, uh, whatever it is, 35 or 70 I use of HMG alternating days. Um, and then we'll do that for a bit and then retest and see how, see how the boys are flowing. You know, it's funny. You said, uh, I don't want people to think that I don't love bodybuilding. It's like, yeah. you, it's like we all get trapped in this, like you have to look or act a certain way because you well, no, I just, I just, no, I just no, I'm, not, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm saying it because I've experienced myself. Like just yesterday, yeah. I put up that photo of me at the, at the at the fight gym or whatever and yeah. people are like your calves are small and i'm like i don't give a fuck. <laughs> people are saying yeah yeah I'm like i don't i'm like i don't care like i don't give a fuck that's really mean <laughs> that's hilarious though why would i care like, why would i care yeah. no it's not mean though because i don't it's not it's not something i'm trying to build like yeah when was the last time when was the last time we trained calves oh fuck i don't remember the last time but, but i mean but why would someone point that out yeah be a dick that that's exactly what i mean why would you point it out i mean that because I feel like some people expect you to just be a bodybuilder forever for, forever, yeah. and look like, and I am a bodybuilder forever, but they expect you to also look like a bodybuilder forever. Yeah, I had one person that this, I, I understand, but don't understand at the same time commented on my, like my, with me talking about my running and stuff. And they're like, chill, bro. What's the rush? And I'm like, <laughs> I, and, I, and I was like, what do you mean? Like, what's the rush? He's like, you have 50 years to like accomplish these goals. I'm like, yeah, why waste time? Like, what what would I just that's the mindset I really couldn't understand. And, and no, people that might be confused of like, why are you jumping into something so fast? It's like, why not? I know what you he know? means. I know what he means. Because a lot of people and, and I I kind of would think this way if I didn't know how much you enjoyed running. So I think what people think is, well, he's an addict. So he's getting out of one thing and jumping into another. It's like it's like when a guy dumps one girl and meets another and has to be with her because he can't okay, be alone. Okay, but in that, in that breath, being addicted to something healthier and like that's good that for you, prove my like longevity and my and is going to motivate me to get my weight down. I don't think is a bad addiction. To don't, have. Get me, yeah. don't get me don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I'm not yeah. I'm not saying you are addicted. I'm saying yeah. it's cool because you're doing something you love. Yeah, but, but the way they're saying oh, it is like they how I was looking at more is like like why okay it's like you're saying what's the rush it's like well do i wait a year do i wait two years do i wait 15 years like what's the appropriate time for me to jump into something new it's like I think, if i want to i'm excited to do something now why wouldn't i just do it now it's like life is fucking short as shit man we all know that so it's like if i want to do something i'm doing it today i ain't waiting until next month or next year or six years i'm gonna do it now go but i think you know? it's because that's also I, pissing off people though because they can't pull the trigger on <laughs> i think that's what i think making that's a what i think it is that's they can't make a commitment is. to anything, so they're like they're jealous. Like, oh, you went from that, and then you went right to that. Hey, man, stop being yeah. so successful. That's the feeling. Yeah. I had that <laughs> stop that being comment. so motivated. Yeah, that yeah. comment is. That's how it made me feel. Was more like, well, was it because you're not like 
you want to do things that you're not going out and actively seeking. So you feel some kind of way and you're like coming at me for it. Can I give like, you an alter alternative thought? Sure. Just because it's, it's the way I'm taking it. Yeah. I think most people are projecting, most people when they comment are only projecting their own feelings. Right. Yeah. So I think when he, he, somebody says that it's more like, what, what would they do? They would probably mm -hmm. retire from whatever they were doing and sit around for a, a number of months until they were like, completely relaxed and bored of being relaxed and then they would jump into something so yeah, that's maybe. that's just that guy and that's what probably like 90 percent of people would do when they retire so this guy's probably just like projecting his own thoughts onto your post yeah right but like from my perspective i'm like well if i have goals of doing other things like let's do them now you no, know ever listen everybody does things differently when i retired at it. i became yeah. a fat slob for like three years so it's yeah. like everybody just takes their own like <laughs> now you're fighting <laughs> now I'm a yeah, fighter. See, but I think I think, <laughs> I think if you had something I think if you had something that you were as interested in or as excited as I am in running, yeah, then it might have you might have been like, hey, I I waited 15 years. Like yeah. I 15 years I was doing something. I've loved track this whole time. I did it when I was young. I still follow you know collegiate professional all the levels of track very closely and I've been very excited to be able to try it again. So mm -hmm. I'm like Hey, I'm young still now. I'm feeling good now. Let's fucking get at it, you know? Well, this is this is gonna sound really stupid to you, but while I was bodybuilding, I always wanted a motorcycle and I didn't get one because I was like, I don't want to hurt myself. Exactly. And the, the minute I retired, I'm like, I want a motorcycle now, right exactly. now. Yeah. <laughs> so so yeah, yeah you're doing like, why wait a year? Why wait, yeah. why wait even yeah. two days? You're yeah. done bodybuilding, yeah. I'm getting a bike today. I want one now, I'm getting it today, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do it. No, there's you no do there's it. Need for delayed gratification in this sense. It's like if you want to do something, especially if it's something that's productive and good for your mental health, good for your physical health, like yo, stop wasting time, homie. Fucking get after it. You know? I mean, I mean, look, it's also all... crazy to see how much stock people put in like their appearance. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like as bodybuilders, especially if you're retired, like the guy making the comment about your calves, like what do you think about your calves ever? I don't think about mine. Like, I don't ever wait. Like, in my, oh man, my calves fuck again. Like, I think in, I, mean, I think in that in that person's defense, they just probably think that if you love bodybuilding, you're going to look a certain way forever. But yeah. you can. Yeah, you well, can, I love basketball, but, can, but I don't fucking go play it every day. Do you know yeah. I, mean? like, I don't. No, but I, what I was going to say is, you can love bodybuilding for the training, not necessarily for the look, which is what I fell in love with. Me too. Like, mm -hmm. I don't. I don't necessarily care if I have a six pack and. 50 I think that's where there's the disconnect between like our kind of generation that's like fading into getting older and this new generation coming up. It's all appearance based. Yeah. And that's no that's more evident. Good. That's no more evident than the fact that there's a physique update every fucking day. I think there's, there's a fucking a this every day. I think there's also a difference who had, you know, especially with, you know, you and I, like, you know, where we competed for a long time as pros, we yeah. were big for a long time. Like, you know, we've lived that life. You know, yeah. and we still love to train and we're always going to train and whether the training changes to running or more martial arts based and there's still some obviously weightlifting in there because we love to do that. You know, like it's, it's not like, it's not all about the one thing all the time anymore. You know, like it's not just about that anymore, you know? Yeah. Well, it's also this, what people don't understand is my doctor has literally been like, you have to lose muscle. Yeah. Like I want you to lose as much muscle as you can. That's yeah. pretty much... <laughs> And I've been stubborn about it because I've been training hard. I love training hard. And that, obviously, training. and that obviously keeps your muscle like where it is. But if somebody says your quads are 20 inches, I'm like, good. Cause that's what Wait. I'm supposed to be doing. If I can want to live longer. Yeah. So speaking of living longer, uh, Paul, I talked to Dr. Khan. He said, we can come up Monday oh. for your chest. Okay. You want to go? Can you go? Yeah. Because he's going to do my stem cell therapy again. I'm going to go for my round, my second round of stem cell therapy while I'm there. Okay, so he can look at this and tell me what I need to do? Yeah, I just, it's great, because the last time I got the stem cell therapy, I got like 10 points on my GFR on my kidneys. So yeah, if, I I can get, if I can get 10 points every time I fucking go, I'll be good to go full blast on juice again in like 10 years. For sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, Mike? Right when I hit about 50, 50 we'll start. Lose blast. muscle, food. Change the juice. Change the juice. <laughs> no, but we'll, uh, he'll take a look at your chest while we're there. And, okay recommend a good doctor to fucking reattach it i said to paul i said you know there's probably a blessing and a curse because he's had that chest torn for how many fucking years now 15 and now it's torn worse but now he can get it surgically reattached so it might be like better than it ever was well i think so if that's what that or ball better, is better than it was before you know what i mean like, yeah 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 so yeah it was a good but, thing today though but you know paul that was the second time i've injured you 
What was the first time? Why well, was the cause of your first pack tear? And now I'm the you were just because you're impatient. And you would not be warm up that day. But yeah, uh, they'd be like, well, I've, well, that time I broke your heart. That's right, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> You've now completely taken away this pack for it. You, uh, you, you, you tore it in half. Now you tore it completely. I got to beat you somehow, Paul. Like, yeah, like, you did it. <laughs> I used to have beautiful packs too for it. Thanks. People want <laughs> people want us to fight now, Paul. They want us to fight each other. Well, yeah, that's going to be on hold now for a little while. Because we're both going to MMA, so like, when's the when's the match? We could do that. We'll do pay per view. I said, me. See, you're an asshole. See, I'm the, I'm the nice one in this fucking relationship. Really my my <laughs> response was, I would never fight Paul. Me and Paul fight together, not against each other. But if we're both skilled fighters, we wouldn't hurt each other. Oh, we could just like choreograph it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just sparring, you know? Well, we'd both be so good. We'd be you know how long so it's defensive. Gonna take, you know how long it's going to take us for us to be that? It's like, uh, we might die and never be that good. <laughs> I know. I got a day three and I'm fucking got tore my pack. Day three. <laughs> <laughs> Not going too well right now. Oh, uh, fuck. Okay. Let's do some questions. Um, What do we got here? I think Lee Priest answered half of them. <laughs> he's, been, he's been on a tear lately, eh? I know, I know. <laughs> uh, for Paul, this is this is for you only, buddy. Okay. Top five best looking bodybuilders of all time. Ooh, boy. Got <laughs> that's, a tough, that's a tough one. Got your Schlur camp. Right on the top of my list. Got your tops my list. Got your Schlur camp. Really? Yeah, he tossed my list. That's the, the best man. looking bodybuilder <laughs> to you. Of all time, we're talking, right? Yeah. Gunter, Barry to May. Oh, very good. Man. He's a good looking man. I'm uh, very concerned that you have this list on the top of your head. <laughs> You're not even hesitating. What's the other guy that, that uh, oh, he looked fucking so sick in like the 92 USAs or something? What about like Gary Stridham? Oh, Dennis, Dennis, Dennis Newman. Dennis Newman. Dennis Newman. That's a fucking Definitely a top five. Right yeah. Definitely a top five. <laughs> so, Paul, my top, if he's not in yours, he's in mine for wait sure. Wait a minute. So, yeah. go ahead. Got Bear, Kevin got LeBron with hair. Gun. <laughs> Kevin LeBron with God hair. Damn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he so, was... so specific. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean when he, yeah, when he lost his hair, he wasn't so much anymore. Okay. So, Gunter, still... Barry, Dennis Newman, Kevin LeBron, Milos. Milos. A young Milos. Look, that's a good look yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. going to tell Milos he's going to be very happy he made your list. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know what? <laughs> I can give an honorable mention to Lee Priest back in the day. Yeah. You're just saying that because you know Lee watches the show. I like Lee. <laughs> 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 but like him in the blonde mid days with the slick back with each hair like yeah, that was yeah, good yeah. yeah yeah and he never thin nothing man yeah ian what's your top five since we're on this roll we might as well just keep going. uh fuck mike well, i definitely I'm putting, time. Right I'm putting dennis i'm, newman not, I'm not answering this <laughs> <laughs> dennis newman's definitely like right there at the top of my list for sure that's why i pointed him yeah, out that was a good that was a good one um Bob Paris. Bob Paris is decent, yeah, for sure. What about Lee Priest? Not Lee Priest. Yeah. Uh sorry. Uh well, Lee, Lee Labrada. Lee Labrada. Lee Labrada, the good one. Yeah, yeah. young, young yeah. Lee Labrada. With yeah. mustache or without mustache? <laughs> with the mustache. With mustache. <laughs> with the, with the, with the duster. You look like a porn, <laughs> look like a porn star. <laughs> Latino porn star. I, it would be rude of me. It would be rude of me not to pick Chris Bumstead. I was gonna oh, say yeah. I, I forgot Chris. about Chris, yeah. How do you forget yeah. about Chris? You talk about him all every day. Yeah, I I don't know how that was up my mind. I was thinking back further. I'll round. I'll just do a top three and I'll round it off with a C bum there. Yeah. Uh, I noticed neither one of you picked any black bodybuilders. Is there a problem with that? I, I did. Kevin Lavoni. He's half he's Italian he's too. Half. Though. He's half. Half Italian. I feel like you guys are a little bit racist. <laughs> half Italian. Like a little bit. Good half. Like <laughs> I clearly don't have the same taste in men as women because it could be all black if we picked women. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Who's the best? Well, Chris Cormier is going to get mad at me right now because I'm doing this, but who's the best black body, best looking black bodybuilder of all time? Yeah. I mean, I, I, as much as I don't like him, I, a young Sean Ray is a good looking cat. Uh, too feminine for me. Yeah. Who's that dude? <laughs> um, <laughs> he has like a French name. <laughs> With the Jerry Curl, um, <laughs> Jerry Curl, yeah, back in the nineties, oh, lightly muscled, um, French name, I think. Did you I say know. lightly muscled? Yeah, he wasn't very big. Lightly muscled. <laughs> yeah, um, he was British. He was British. 
Well, he, didn't, he didn't put that. He didn't put that on a shirt, man. <laughs> <laughs> Lightly muscled. <laughs> I'm like not a mass freak. <laughs> John Pierre, something I think, Ian. No, uh, not Fuchs. No, no, of course not Fuchs. Fuck. Once I once I we say his name, you're gonna know right away, but. What about Arnold, man? You just throwing Arnold out like that? No, we said a good looking dude. Well, we said black. Serge oh. Dubray. Huh? Serge Dubray. Dubray. Serge Dubray was a good looking motherfucker. Classy man. And class and yeah, and he had class too. He could be in the top five, like the real top mm-hmm. five. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Charles Claremont. Charles Claremont. Oh, British. Oh, yeah. He could, he could be in the real top five if you weren't racing. That wasn't what I was thinking anyway. That's what I meant. <laughs> That's what I meant. If, if, Ian and, if Ian and Paul weren't racist, he would be in the top five. Well, I guess that was Claremont. <laughs> <laughs> he's in the UK, so he's not British. That Al- wasn't what I was thinking, Al- though. Uh, no. You're thinking Al Cugurley? Yeah. What Aaron, you Baker? Say, Aaron Baker? Oh, Aaron Baker. Aaron Baker. Was Aaron Jerry Baker? Jerry Purcell? Okay, let's move this on. This guy wasn't very good. Can we can we move on now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if Paul were before, competing before Chub, before Paul pops the chubby over there, <laughs> <laughs> I think he's bathroom guys. We'll be back in a little while. Uh, if Paul were to compete again, coached by Fuad, what's the highest level he could attain as a Masters? Well, I'm a 50 now, so I'd be Grand Masters, and I would win my pro card. Only because <laughs> only because I was coaching. Stupid question. Moving on. <laughs> Although, you know, I got to say, I judged uh, North Americans. There was a 50-plus category there. Well, they have all kinds of different master's categories. The guys in the 50, one guy, I think his name was Jason Lowe from BC. Mm-hmm. This guy could not believe this guy's fucking size and shape for that age, though. Some of the guys like, man, some of the guys I see at 45 and 50, I'm like, they must have trained. I don't know if their genetics are incredible or the way they trained was just different, but they just don't. I'm like, how are you not injured? Yeah. I know. I know, and there's like, like this guy. There's no this guy must lift heavy still. Like he was big, like he was yeah. full. Like he must lift heavy to look like that still. Yeah, and yeah. to be fifty plus and to look like that and lift that heavy still. I always want to. Know, know what? I feel like I want to have somebody like that on the podcast and ask them like what their training methodology was. All methodology was like if it was like if they were careful, if they were reckless, if they binged, yeah, if they didn't volume. binge, if they did a ton of drugs or not a ton. Of, like I just yeah. want to know how you get to fifty and still keep that completely healthy physique because. I've seen guys keep it and train reckless, and I've seen guys keep it and train smart. So I'm like, it's got to be a genetic thing. thing. Yeah. 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 Uh, These questions are all for you, Paul. What the fuck? Uh, (laughs) Does Paul prefer Indica, Sativa, or Hybrid? Indica. Question for Paul. He will never... Paul, Paul question question for Paul. He will never have tile foot again, but he has to give it to one of the podcast members. Who is he picking? Oh, I wouldn't wish on any of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. No, I wouldn't wish on any of you guys. Who are you picking? You gotta pick someone. You gotta pick somebody? Yeah. Well, I'd probably pick you then, Fuad, not because of any kind of malicious intent. <laughs> but just because I think you think I exaggerated it for a long time. So I like you to feel it. I totally think you're exaggerating it. I, That's why I want you to you are one hundred percent right about your thought process. Yeah, it wasn't not because but of you do, but you do the same thing to me though. I've like torn a muscle before and been like, I don't know if I can train anymore. And somebody will ask you, be like, ah, who has got a boo boo? No, he'll like, be like, <laughs> I'm always like, did it bruise? Like, it doesn't got a bruise, you ought to be torn. It doesn't, <laughs> it, does, it does. That's a that's a fucking I myth. I, I hope know. you know what? I, hope I used to think that was true though. I hope your chest doesn't bruise, and then I'm gonna call you a fucking liar. <laughs> that's why I thought it was a myth because when my chest tore the first time it, like my whole body was purple well no I've like, had both I've, I've had both the only reason I know it's a myth is because when I tore my hamstring the second time it was a 12 centimeter tear and I know that from an MRI it wasn't like a doctor poking around centimeter had, or millimeter centimeter what that's like... yeah yeah it was like this so it was a 12 centimeter tear not one fucking inkling of bruising at all I think that's where my my uh my dope began. I remember because I remember that because I don't think I was trying. But I had, but I had happened. an, but I had it. No, I was in Toronto. I know, I know. But I remember being like, ah, I wasn't really torn. But then when I saw you get ready for a next show, I was like, oh yeah, fucking it, Darren. Fucking I can pussy, see it. fucking pussy. Twelve why centimeters. Why would I fucking lie? <laughs> I don't know. I just at the time I was like, I, I just thought it had this to is, bruise. This is how you are about everything. You're just skeptical about everything. <laughs> Not everything, but only from certain people. Because other people, they could say anything and they'd be like, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Right? <laughs> Not always, no. Okay. Sometimes. Uh, if you could restart your career from scratch and one coach and pick one coach to take you from your first pro show to retirement, who would you have? 
John or Hani for me. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, Matt, Matt or Hani. Yeah. I mean, I look, I even Patrick, I had a lot of success with Patrick. We gelled really well. I have a lot of fun memories working with Patrick. And as like a personality, we got along very long. Uh, we got along very well. He just has like a very like fatherly uncle figureness to him that is like very comforting. Yeah. Um, so I mean, any of those, I trust Hani and Matt and Patrick all very highly. I mean, any of them, I would do my entire career with for sure. Yeah. Well, you were an amateur and you just train yourself. No, I worked with, uh, so to turn pro, I worked with Greg Doucette. Oh, that's right. You told me before. And then some of my shows before that, like when I was doing a junior, uh, Hassan did, Jama coached me. Did Greg really? let, you eat, let you eat cereal? <laughs> some of the shit I ate was wild. I was eating like peanut butter and fucking jam sandwiches with bags of popcorn and like crazy as shit, man. Yeah. Okay, I love that. Good diet. But I was, I was yeah. fucking starving <laughs> because it's like, you eat these things, but the calorie like deficit yeah. is like extreme, you know, yeah, 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 especially yeah. because he doesn't, didn't really have me doing much cardio. I was doing like 10 minutes, 50 minute warm ups before I would train. So like not much cardio, but I was eating like fucking, See? you know, one, one PB P28 sandwich with one bag of like 50 calorie popcorn. So like your intake is tiny, you know, I would totally rather eat like bodybuilding diet food and eat a small amount rather than eat something delicious and only get a bite of it. Well, see, this is the problem. It's like it's nice to do at first, yeah. But then, as you get hungrier, your your appetite and yeah. your want for sweet food is just through the goddamn roof, right? Like, right. Oh my I god, I've never been more hungry and craving food like I did that crap. You know, it's like it's like this. Like when you're on a traditional but bodybuilding diet, for sure. When you're eating a, a traditional bodybuilding diet, and you're eating like chicken, rice, steak, potato, whatever. And let's say you get a cheat day or a cheat meal. The day after, you're like, oh, I want more food. Where can I get more food? Yeah. Or or if you have your cheat meal like early in the day, the rest of your day is fucked. All you're thinking about is food. Or on the complete opposite yeah. side of that, I ate like bodybuilding food with almost no cheat meals of any kind for 12 years. And yeah. I completely almost eliminated my want or say like cravings for that yeah. kind of food. So, you yeah. Know. But that's why I'm saying like I could never do, there's no way I could ever do like the if it fits your macros where you're like, yeah. Yeah, you can have pizza, but have one slice. No, it man, makes it, it makes it harder for sure. Yeah, I'm gonna fucking smash. So just the just put the rest thing. in the fridge till later. Yeah, I can do it. I was gonna, <laughs> for I, was gonna two, I was gonna have two burgers from Wendy's tonight, and I had one instead. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was like, time to cut back, Mike. Calorie restriction. <laughs> All this and time, I, uh, I need this bag of Doritos I got sitting right here. You know, cool, cool ranch. No, they're just original. Have you, tried the, have you Nacho tried the cheese, yeah. the dill pickle ones? Oh, I have it. amazing! Oh, those are so you want to know the best chips around though? Mm. President's but. Choice loaded ketchup and loaded sour cream. Is that I've what had the loaded sour cream? Yeah. Is that what the extra mm. ripple, ri extra ripples? Well, like no. bridge ripple <laughs> chips, yeah. yeah. Right, like those ketchup ones. I had the ketchup ones. They're loaded <laughs> with ketchup. Wow, really? You know, American, entire bag. You know, Americans don't have ketchup chips, or they do some places. Oh, I know they don't have pickle either, right? I think they have pickle. They do dill pickle. ketchup and dill. I thought it was ketchup and dill pickle. I mean, Americans have. comment below if you have dill pickle chips. I thought it was just ketchup, but I don't know. Yeah. Oh, and I don't think they have all dressed either. All right? dressed, they don't do. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like all dressed anyway. No. I like all dressed. I don't think there's a all chip. I, for commies. I, I don't think there's a chip I don't like. <laughs> there's there no a, chip you don't like? Is there a chip you don't like other than all dressed? Sour cream and onion, I'm not crazy about. What? I'm not crazy about sour cream. Yeah. That's regular chips are fuck. Re regular chips are hideous. Yeah, regular chips suck. Fucking just plain, you mean? Unless, 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 unless you got dip. Unless you have dip. Unless you, you got dip, dip is different. Yeah, it's still it's, fuck. I'm not right, a dip chip I mean, guy though. In that same breath, if they're there in a bowl sitting in front of you, you could just fucking pile into those for thirty minutes. You know, I probably, I probably won't. I really? It's not worth the stomachache. Yeah. You got stomachache from chips? Well, if I eat a whole bag. Yeah. yeah you try the all dressed Doritos yet? No, I haven't seen those. I'll try them. I didn't see those. Things. I'm gonna order them tonight. <laughs> They're an SO <laughs> or whatever, Circle K, whatever the thing's called. Uh how well would have Fuad done at the Masters Olympia had he competed horribly? <laughs> uh would you rather A let your dog lick peanut butter off your nuts or B <laughs> lick peanut butter off your dog's nuts? <laughs> <laughs> whichever, whichever you choose. Would have to be live streamed for everyone to see, and it can't. It can be any breed of dog if that matters. Uh, <laughs> I'll fucking do my dog. She's a, well, it's a girl, but if I had a pomeranian, I think it's worse. One little lick done. I think <laughs> it's worse. Mike, I would say it's worse 
if you lick your dog's pussy than if you lick your dog's balls. No, don't say it like that. The pussy. No, I'm saying if it was my Pomeranian, oh, oh, boy, I would choose I a Pomeranian. That word that's breed. so fucking gross. I'm just saying you your have dog, your dog's pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Got dark on the podcast. I'm just yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. You so said. harsh. That like cut sharp. You know? <laughs> yeah. I'm take a shower. I'll be back. <laughs> I don't think those two words go together. I don't oh. know if. Uh... I'm, I'm licking it off my dog's dick for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, can't... I would feel like I was molesting my dog if I made him lick peanut butter off my balls. I'd be like, what but licking his problem? balls isn't molesting him? No, because I'm just trying to just get it over me. with. <laughs> They're used no. to having people sniff their butts all the time. Yeah. yeah and also, what what do you want? What do you want all over the internet for the rest of life? Your fucking dick getting peanut butter licked off by your dog, oh, or just you yeah. like doing a little lick off your dog's dick? They're both bad, but one is definitely worse than the other. I think the second one's worse. No. no. I don't know. I think it, it might be. I think you're I would judge off your dog's either. balls is borderline funny. You don't have yeah, borderline <laughs> funny. <laughs> is he gonna get his dog to demonstrate? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have a dog. Maybe that's why you can't once you Maybe get that's a dog, why, yeah. I got a cat. I wouldn't do it off my cat. Or you like your cat. You don't like your cat. Or you like I love my first cats, cat. Right? I like one of them. I hate the other one. <laughs> would you like would you lick the cat's balls that you like? No. Would you let it lick your balls? Yeah, I'd like that. Yeah. Would you rather like I mean, if I had to? If I had to, if it was one or the other, not <laughs> What kind of lick are we talking about? Is it like a one lick or is it like until the peanut butter is gone? Well, enough to That's what I was saying. The breed doesn't matter. You can choose the breed. So pick a small yeah, dog with little balls and one little... little, little See, the, ball, the problem is if the thing is like the dog gets to lick your balls until the peanut butter is gone, the dog is going to lick your balls like for five minutes. Not if you got a big it's dog gonna... with a big tongue. Yeah, it will because as long as, <laughs> it, as long as it can smell the peanut butter, it will keep licking. Yeah, but you stop them. Once the peanut butter is gone, you stop them. <laughs> You're not gonna let him keep going. You're done. Stop yeah, it. You're, that's it. It's gone. See, there goes there the you go. Oh god. <laughs> Would you? We gotta, blur, we gotta blur this out. <laughs> Come you gotta get put some. the peanut butter on it. You. <laughs> get the jiffy uh, I don't understand this question, but I'm gonna read it anyway. Does Paul get the N word passed because he's Italian? Well, plus my wife is part. You still don't get a pass, dude. No, hey, go ahead and say it. No. no. <laughs> the worst thing could happen. Yeah, <laughs> probably a lot. Uh, well, Ian, you go to now, work tomorrow. Everyone's everyone's just staring at you like, "Hey, man." Yeah. <laughs> uh, will Ian now take part in the next TRT Olympics? <laughs> yes. Uh, from a business perspective, which opportunity is most commonly missed by pros? Oh, that's a good one. Um, I that's, think the question. Say that again. I can't really give a specific answer to that. Like, well, I'm just thinking off the top of my head. So, so it's probably relative within the industry. I guess not in general. I think okay. I think the biggest business opportunity that's missed with pros is just the ability, like, of marketing themselves, like outside of just like, like, like displaying their personality for people to connect with, for them to build stuff upon that. You know what I mean? So I'll say this. So that's true. But I'll say if something more tangible. Uh, most pros will start t-shirts or YouTube or coaching or all of the above. But what I've noticed is a majority of pros are not, not consistent with any of it. Yeah. They'll do like a, they'll do like a shirt here and there. They'll do like a, they'll coach a guy for a little while. They're like, uh, it's just all very like an afterthought. And I think, I think a lot of bodybuilders that are listening that are coming up could probably do themselves a service by, you know, one of my friends told me a while back, he said, because I was doing that when I was a pro, and <clears throat> he said to me, look, I want to buy your shirt, but I don't want to buy your shirt if one comes out every six months. It's like, I want to support something that's going to always be there. And it's always going to be fresh. It's always going to be new. It's always going to be, I can count on it to be there like every, every month or every week. And if it's not, if it's very inconsistent, then I don't want to spend my money. And people have a hard time taking their money out of their wallet. So they have to want to support you, but you have to be consistent for them to want to support you. I get that. So that I think is the biggest, because I think bodybuilders are so focused on being better bodybuilders. They forget that they can build a brand that they can take with them when they're done competing. Yeah. So Mike, anything you're, you had a good business mind. You see anything? 
that athletes are doing wrong, maybe? I mean, like, directly, because a lot of you, like, a lot of us know, like, a lot of guys who are pros or a lot of guys who bodybuild, they're also trainers, right? So I think they could, they kind of have, like, this walkthrough mentality of, like, oh, I just kind of, I train people and I kind of watch them and count reps and, you know I mean, it's not making you a better bodybuilder doing that. And it's also not making you more money because people can see that you don't give a fuck. Yeah. You're just standing there. Yeah. yeah. So if you, if you started viewing your training people, I'm not talking about your business mind and all that stuff, but even if the most immediate impact of putting more money in your wallet, if you're training people would be to become a better trainer and actually give a fuck about what your clients are doing and take an investment. Because if you, train people and you see the mistakes these people are making and you understand how to hurdle over them, it makes you a better bodybuilder. Yeah. Cause you now understand how to train yourself better. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a double reward in the sense that you're, you're doing well and you're getting, you're learning at the same time. Right. Do you think part but of I agree with you saying about the, the merch and stuff like that and building a brand, it's like, it just be authentic too. Cause I, I find that a lot of people who are doing this, they're just very, what's the next cool thing I can do that makes people want me to like, want my stuff? What design can I copy? What's what like trend is cool right now? Just mm -hmm. do what you feel is cool and worry about what people think of it later. Because if you're true to yourself and what you want to do and the designs you want to put out or the stuff that you want to make, then people will support you and people will be cool with it. Cause they see that it's something you want, you like, right? It's like, but, with, but within that, Mike, let me ask you a question. So, I have released clothing that I don't necessarily love. I can, I appreciate that it looks cool, but it's not something mm -hmm. I necessarily wear cuz I generally wear mostly black and like right and but you yeah. can't just have you can't just have a full fucking market clothes like of clothing of just black t-shirts. So I'm like there you go. Well, well, you can. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like you, can't, mine. <laughs> you can't you can't no no you can but if you're trying to like expand your demographic yeah, but that's a, the thing is with that and like i understand what you're saying is like and i had this discussion because i made fun of a bunch of different brands that have literally no integrity yeah attached to them they'll put their clothes on anybody yeah it's just like i don't want everyone to wear my shit yeah yeah yeah, yeah i'm yeah. fine with it just like high-end brands they don't want everyone to be able to afford their shit or wear their shit do you know what i mean so it's like i would rather have the people that fuck with me and support with me Right. Be the only people that buy my stuff. And then if I convert new people, cool. But like to get this in the masses, like everybody's wearing my shirt and it's all over the fucking place. That shit is a fucking we all know it's here and then it's boof, down. Okay, I'm because... not I'm not I'm not saying that, but what I am trying mm. to say is like so like I said, I like wearing primarily black, right? Mm. But I feel like within hostile, like not without going outside of like who we are. But within mm -hmm. hostile, it's okay to follow like seasonal changes of colors and stuff like that. Like, do you agree with that, or are you just like, no, this is what I want to wear. This is all we're putting out. No, I would just stay. I mean, I would never put out something that I wouldn't. I'm not cool with, or I wouldn't wear myself. Hmm. And I figure that's like a good way to be because I I want people that are like minded like me and kind of see things the way I see them and yeah agree with my my mentality and the way I am. I'd rather understand that like mike sells this type of clothes because th that is his type of clothing right so, like i'm not going to go make a fucking pink shirt with fucking purple writing on it because i'll never wear that like i made a couple of white shirts i've never yeah. worn them yeah yeah yeah. i don't wear white see I, like, feel I made like, a cream i feel like if you have a, a a following of like let's say you have a million customers mm -hmm. they're not all gonna like black t-shirts so i feel no. like I feel like you can still create variety within your brand. So you're not going like, if I only like wearing black shirts, it doesn't mean that everybody that fucks with hostile only wears black shirts. So I feel like you can be a, a fan of hostile and, and like white shirts or like, like beige shirts or like fucking whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think that's my, the way I think of it. That's why I'm saying like there's certain colors I wouldn't wear, but it doesn't mean I don't like the clothing. It just means it's not the my style. Of the yeah. yeah, yeah. Like it's like I'm like the owner You're of just like... making a design you like and putting on a different palette of shirt. Yeah. yeah, like the owner of of Nike, for example. Like, let's say he likes black shirts. He's not going to be able to be Nike if he just makes a bunch of black shirts. No, but I don't think Mike's also trying to be Nike. You know, so I think yeah. that's a difference between yeah. something like yeah. hostile, where you're trying to be like a big global brand, and someone like Mike that's 
wants to sell clothes to people that are like like minded and support of shit and just like keep yeah. it kind of like in a small group of you know and if the group grows great but if yeah. it doesn't it's okay because he's doing it what's authentic to just him and what he wears you know yeah i think what you said just before that is exactly how i see it it's like if i like the design that i'm happy with it but then yes. i allow my like we have a creative director so if i like the design i have final say but then the creative director goes okay i think these colors are in season right now yeah see i do the same so i'm the same as you but yeah. like I'll, I'll have it where me and Melissa will make and agree upon a design. Right. And then I'm like, if you want to put it on whatever shirt you think is going to do the best to sell at this time of year right. that people will like, you know, the last drop we did was black. And a lot of people DM and say, Hey, when we, we can get some white shirts or beige shirts, or can we get crew neck sweaters or whatever right. it is. Right. Um, but, but I still, I'm also not as picky with you where I only wear black shirts. So like whatever we make, I'll wear. You know, I can't if you're say, a I can't... shirt or a black shirt or a crew neck or a hoodie, I like them all because I'm 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 liking the design that's on it, and I'm not picky with color so much. Um, yeah. So in that case, it's not a big deal for me. I but... can't say I can't say I only wear black. We have a lot of different colors that I do wear, but like for example, like recently, I know like what's in style right now is a lot of like mauve and like fucking yeah, you know, just some more pastel colors that yeah. are or like. Uh, like, for example, I want to do a pair of cargos and we're going to do them in like black, green and like khaki. Yeah. Those are all cool colors. I wouldn't wear the khaki. Doesn't mean I don't think it's cool. It's just because I don't wear khaki. I would probably wear the okay. black and the green. Yeah. So it's kind of it's kind of like that. It's not that I don't like the design or like the colors. It's just shit doesn't suit me. Right. So yeah. it's like I feel like you have to I don't I don't want to say you have to because you can do whatever you want. But I feel like. As long as I like the design, then I have to be able to let my creative director take yeah uh, when you're doing a brand your size that makes sense yeah 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 okay um i don't know how we got on that how did we get to there oh business um you were talking about something about business before that though it wasn't just about merch for for a second you were said something before that that I about trainers just counting right a better trainer yeah. Oh, yeah. oh that's what i wanted to say i think is it because they don't know any other way like remember, I, th I think a lot of I think a lot of bodybuilders that train, and I can say this from experience, they don't have any any structure or semblance of how to even organize a workout properly. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. They, they literally just go in the gym and like, oh, do this today and do yeah. that today. It's like it's just, they're just picking exercises, and the people that are are they're teaching to don't know any better. So to them, it's all good and new and cool, um, and they and they just think that there's a rhyme and a reason to it. But I think they're literally just like. Walking through a gym. Oh, okay. Pec deck will start here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Chest press. I like this one. Cool. Okay. When there's not like proper programming and periodization of the training, I, I would say 95% of trainers are not doing that. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's, it's, it's like a double edged sword. Like Mike said, cause like you're not improving your, like if you're putting effort into this programming, one, it's going to help you get better and you're going to learn and you're going to put more effort, but two, it, your clients are going to get more progress and you're going to get more clients and your clients are going to stick around longer and they're going to be more interested, you know? So I yeah. think it's, it's like, a it's double like visually, thing. visually people can see when someone is training someone and they know what they're doing. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Like it's anybody, even if you have like no eye for whatever you're like, man, that guy is like, he's watching every rep. He's helping this or um, girl. Like she's, she's understanding, like she's, getting her to move in certain ways. She's getting her to this. It's like, they don't have to be the best trainer in the world, but as long as they're invested in, in what the client's doing, right. Then the person, you might not know this person's watching you, but they've been watching you for three fucking months. Yeah. And yeah. then they're finally like, you know what? I want to, I, I see what you're doing from afar, but I want to understand what it is. So I'm going to come train with you. So it's like, yeah. you don't have to go to these lengths of being like, these trainers with their fucking like tried and true ad thing, like only a few more spots left for this uh, <laughs> they opening always do to that. my session. Like, you it's fucking that. full of shit. You're fucking <laughs> empty. You have nobody. If you say that, you're empty. Like, <laughs> true, like even what you said, like even if I just go to like my local fucking good life, you know, you can so tell the difference between trainers that are invested in their clients and taking proper time to do their programming that are like level four or five trainers that like take the time to do the courses, learn, do proper programming for their clients. And then those that have just like completed their can fit and they're just doing it because it's a job that pays yeah, money. That's right. And you can tell like, and it does... how they're kind of walking through the gym and just like picking a machine, picking an exercise versus someone like I'll be at the gym. I can see like they'll start their exercise. They do a proper warm up. 
Then they move into the workouts. Their exercise selection is appropriate for the person that they're training and makes sense. And they're working through a workout that's, you know, makes sense and is appropriate, right? Can I ask, so you can, can I, definitely tell the difference. And and for me, bank, like I said, so. even me, I noticed that. So like if I was a client watching the gym, I would see that and be like, hey, like what they're doing is cool versus just like hopping from fucking fit fix machines, you know? Can I we, went, you? we were in Bancroft. We were at that gym, right? We went yeah. to that gym. You guys had left the uh, second day. I think we went there and I was still there after. Mm. And there was a girl who was a trainer there and she was, she had trained two different elderly people. Okay. One of them, one of them was like a little mentally handicapped and the other one was just kind of physically restricted because she had some physical issues. Right. But she was like, I want, I didn't want to bother her in her session, but like the way she handled those two people, which are fucking difficult to train, like yeah. Yeah. not talking about bodybuilding and you have to be like super athletes and stuff. It's like, she fucking was so patient with them, like yeah. so understanding, like understanding how, how to push them and like how to like it could be getting up and down off the bench three times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. could be like we well, last time we did these, you remember, and you did this much weight, we're gonna try a little bit more this time, and they're like comfortable. It's mm -hmm. like people like that, like that's good training. It's not world class yeah. bodybuilding and, and putting people on stage, but it's like that you're improving that person's quality of life and you're taking the time to put the effort in. Cause she could just, she could just call it in like, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. ride the bike for 15 minutes. Then we're going to do a little stretching get you the fuck out of here. You know what I mean? Like she yeah. wants to like help this woman, these various people like actually become better functioning people outside of the gym. Right. So mm -hmm. it's cool to see that shit. For sure. uh, Mike or Ian, do you guys think there's a place anywhere for instinctive training? And I'm not talking about the average person I'm talking about, like open pro bodybuilders or just pro level app pro level. Well, it depends on how good your instincts are. <laughs> you know, well, I guess, like, I guess let me, let me rephrase the question real quick. So you guys are talking about proper exercise selection, right? But there's been periods of my career where I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to fuck shit up on purpose and do, do. things 100%. And, 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 do things, and do things backwards. Like, yeah. you know, like proper exercise selection would be like, okay, I'm going to start on a chest press machine and get my muscle acclimated. Then I'm going to go to like a meat and potatoes exercise. Then I'm going to go to a pump exercise. Then I'm going to finish with an, with an isolation. That was always my programming. But sometimes I'd be like, you know what? I'm going to fucking start with the isolation. And then I'm going to do another isolation and I'm going to do the compound movement last. Yeah. See, I think, I think this is, is like, it depends on your level of instincts and body awareness, you know? Okay. Uh, I think for you, you knew your body, you knew what felt good and you could, and you might do that once in a while, but mm -hmm. you also might have the wherewithal to be like, okay, this isn't the best thing for me. And I'm not going to do it every right. day or I'm just going to yeah. go in willy nilly, you know? But I also think as you get more advanced, I think taking a little more time to pick your exercises appropriately matters a lot more. Like, especially, yeah. you know, me the last few years, like me being a very like, tr you know, front dealt dominant person, yeah. me going in and doing a bunch of machine fixed presses all the time was just making me have better front delts, you know? Yeah, yeah, so like yeah. I need to put myself in positions or like when I worked with Mike and putting myself in positions to kind of, you know, eliminate a bit of biases that I was having. Um, and exercise selection is going to be important in that. So even at that level, it's definitely important, you know? But I also think you also know what exercise feel good and you put them in an order that makes sense, you know? So even if you're just like instinctively doing it, you are still instinctively putting it in an order that makes sense, you know? Mike, I'll let you answer before I go go ahead with a second thought on this. I just think that as long as you're, especially if you're at a certain level, as long as your movement is good, like you understand your principles of movement for each body part kind of carry over and you understand how to train properly, yeah. then it's like, yeah, you can fuck around all you want. Like there's no rhyme or reason. There's no order that's going to elicit a better workout than another workout. It's just... Yeah. Sometimes it might get down to, like you said, trying to isolate areas you can't, you haven't been hitting. So you have to be very purposeful in what you're doing. Yeah. And there could be like injuries to work around or any number of things. Right. But as long as your movement is great and you understand where to lock down and hit, like your workout can be structured however the fuck you want. And I guess that's what I'm saying too, with like putting myself in positions and yeah. picking exercise that where my movement can be optimized. But the order is like, you can fuck around. Like Mike said, you just need to make sure you're doing movements that are appropriate and are are working, you know? So Paul, if you can think back, cause I'm, I'm, I'm always very short sighted in my, in my thinking back to our career, like our lifting career, mm -hmm. but like, we didn't really fuck around too much when we were like really going hard. Like as far as, um, like, our, like starting our, with like our, a our, our training was always like, we always had a pretty good like rhythm to how we did it. Well, even like, um, I, early I, on, 
I'm only thinking about now because now our workouts are different like every fucking week. Oh, yeah. Is. But but back like we would start out a lot oftentimes with like a barbell bench press or a flat bench press for chest. We would mm-hmm. start with that, but we would warm up. Yeah, we would we would definitely warm up like we would be four or five sets deep before you got to a working set. No, but I'm saying like. I'm trying to think back then to what Ian was saying, I guess. My my memory is skewed because I've been training a different way for the last like five years. Mm-hmm. But I guess when we were like in in prime lifting years, it was always pretty like standard week to week. The other the other day I went yeah. I went and trained, I went and did a five by five on flat bench. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. awesome. <laughs> That's like first time you've done flat bench in like 10 years, probably. <laughs> yeah. I just I like warmed it up thoroughly and I tossed on like a weight that I I thought was like would be challenging by the end of yeah. the fifth set but like that i could complete pretty pretty comfortably yeah so i put on like three plates in a 10 or a 15 15 or something and just fucking did you know five by five on it it was great yeah isn't that awesome yeah. you get the freedom to yeah. be like yeah i did oh, that then i went yeah. and did some standing overhead press fucked around did a little triceps it was great did some dips <laughs> i just did dips and i was like i'll just do one set as many as i can i'm good fuck off you know and then i had a 45 minute conversation with a kid where he just picked my brain on like every single question he could get out of me. And I like literally didn't give a fuck to sit there for 30 minutes and answer every question of his. He was like, nutrition, training, how do I get into shows? Where do I sign up? Do this. I was just like fucking gave him every bit of info I could, you know? <laughs> uh, I for it. Yeah. Predictions on Regan in Spain. We already did that. Uh, can Ian please bring back the, if it's, it's only gay, if you're gay shirts. <laughs> Uh, I'll, do, I'll do a short run on them. We've got a lot of new. Obviously, I've got a whole world of different fucking things I can market now with the retirement and running yeah. and all stuff. So I'm taking advantage of all of it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Will Ian still pay to? <laughs> will Ian still pay someone to come scoop up his dog shit now that he's retired? <laughs> yes, you pay someone to do that right now. Yeah, he does. <laughs> I, have a, I have a company, a local company called Poot Squad. I think they also do like a uh, like landscaping, and stuff, but one of their services is is picking up dog shit. And they come here every Friday, like usually, like kind of like early afternoon. They just like go through your lawn quick and pick up all your shit, and then then in the fall they'll do all your leads, like leave bagging and removal for you. How much yeah, you pay for that? But now you're retired, you can do your own. I think I pay like. It might be like three or four hundred bucks for the entire season. It's not too bad. Oh, for the whole season? Oh, that's not I'd bad. Pay for, I'd pay 400 bucks and never have to pick up dog shit. Someone clean your dog shit up? Yeah. So what's <laughs> no, the season? Four months? Because like, Dil- Dylan's here too, and he has a big dog too. So he pays oh. to see a, a portion of that. His one dog shit are the same as all three of my little dogs, you know? <laughs> um, so like we split that. So like, and they come and they fucking pick up the dog shit and you don't worry about it. And it's clean yeah. back there. So you can walk around the backyard and not worry about it. It's good. But they come once a week? They come once once a week, every Friday. You can pay to do more if you have like, bigger dogs that obviously are shitting a lot in your backyards or you have a smaller yard that's, you know, you can pay them to come twice a week or whatever. Um, yeah. But yeah, they're like basic services once a week. They come and come on every Friday or whatever and pick up the shit. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Uh, question for Ian and Mike. What's Ian's kink and and does Mike beat his girlfriend when they have sex? <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of, how are they tethered together, those questions? Yeah, I'm kind of bad that they didn't ask me if I beat up Melissa during sex, too. Why they only ask Mike? <laughs> Why not me? You're not Why tough enough, you're not, beat up you're, Melissa? What the not, fuck? Why not, not look tough like enough, that? bro. You're not tough enough. <laughs> I'll punch you right now. Get over here. <laughs> Get over here. <laughs> you're a good uh, one. Just I curious. I really have a kink, to be honest. Uh, does he mean like a sexual kink? Yeah, like yeah. I don't have like, a kink. Oh, oh, you like yeah. a finger in your butt. We know that. No, it's not really my thing. No. I tried it, but it's not like something I would want to do more than <laughs> say I tried, you know? It's a little too cold. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't quite do it for me. But like I I don't know. Like I can't I don't have any like I'm not like obsessed with sucking on toes or like fucking I don't think I have a kink either. Yeah. Not when I want to not when I want to tell anybody anyway. Uh... <laughs> My just, kink is that I like vagina. I don't know. Fuck, like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> no, that's, that's weird enough nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That makes you an outlier in this society. Uh, just curious if Ian knew he was going to retire when he was training with Mike. Either way, I'm happy he made the con- con- made the content, and best of luck with them both. Also, guess he won't be doing the Detroit Pro. No, no but he I'll will be there. there. I'll be there for sure. I'm going to judge. <laughs> no, I, uh, <laughs> yeah. I definitely... I- I definitely, obviously, the thought had come into my mind, and and 
why it was partly why I went and trained with Mike is because I was looking for something to kind of like spark get me, go, get yeah, me going, yeah. spark me a bit. And it did spark me. It just didn't spark me to want to continue competing, but it sparked my love. And, and obviously, you know, I learned a lot and it sparked my interest in training in different ways. Um, but Way go, that, Mike. Yeah, it was Mike. Mike actually told me. <laughs> what you did, Mike. I trained with Mike. I'm like, fuck this. This is this. <laughs> no, but yeah, was, the thought had been in my mind for well over a year, even before that. Um, I'm not but, allowed to. Uh, sorry, go ahead, Ian. You're not allowed to what? No, no, go ahead. Um, but yeah, no, like I, I didn't, I hadn't made the decision, um, obviously, uh, but it, it was definitely a thought at the time. Yes. Yeah. I was going to say, I'm not allowed to judge. I, well, I was, was going to start judging so I could fucking travel the country with you guys and it would be fun. But you promote? Is that why? No, I'm, I have my own no, supplement company. company. I have my own supplement company. Supplement company. Oh, yeah, yeah. You have a conflict. Because yeah. I, I got to have a good conversation with Jim Mannion this weekend when I went down with Samson. And uh, he's like, well, you're a coach. I'm like, I'm not a coach. He's like, you're coaching Samson. I'm like, I'm not coaching Samson. I'm just putting him through a workout. He goes, listen to me. He's like, uh, well, you got a supplement company. I'm like, yeah, I do. He's like, we well, can't judge. Yeah, because you, <laughs> you just made that up on the spot. It's I know. Like, it seems like you're, just, <laughs> you're you're wearing shoes. That's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, no, he well, said you, to have, me, you have a vested interest in specific athletes. It makes sense. Yeah. He said, he said to me. He said to me that they've had that issue before with people judge that have athletes on stage yeah. when they're sponsored athletes. He's like, I'm yeah. like, well, I just I'll recuse myself from those shows. He's like, yeah, he's like maybe. He's like, we'll talk about it. I'm pretty much that means, he's like that meant no. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about it. Never. We'll yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, am I allowed to say what if that I'm doing Ottawa's or we have yeah. to cut that? I don't think so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. No, I'm sure. I'm sure the promoters will love it. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm doing my first. I'm test judging first at uh at Ottawa. So I'll be the Ottawa local like CPA show here. Is I can't be believe they're making you test judge. It's fucking insane. That's okay. I mean, it's I'll, not a big deal. It's part of the part of the progress I, part of the process i'll take I one for the team i'll take one for the team and then we'll go from there can we yeah. sit can we sit in the stands and heckle you for being a test judge <laughs> yeah. please do test judge number three we'll yell, <laughs> we'll just, we'll yell at all the scores of the people who like the last people <laughs> yeah. fuck, try to fuck up against scores <laughs> um did you guys i didn't tell you guys about my fucking weekend so listen oh, to i this. knew yeah so i gotta i i went with samson to pittsburgh to meet with the ifbb for a video shoot an interview and some uh coaching on his uh posing so i get to fucking pittsburgh i get groceries for the airbnb i check in matt the videographer gets there and then samson calls from new york and he's like there's no flights to That's my fl my flight to pittsburgh has been canceled and there's no other flights till fucking monday i'm gonna miss the video shoot with the ifbb and I'm like, just fucking rent a car. I'm like, you're six hours away. Just rent a car and get here. It's like all the rental cars are booked. No fucking rental cars. So I get in my fucking truck. <laughs> I'm like, I'll come pick you up. I get in my truck. I drive from Pittsburgh to fucking New York. I get there. How far at, is that? It was six and a half hours. I get there at three in the morning. Something like that, I think. I don't know, two, two or three in the morning. And then we drive all the way back. Overnight. You drove at night. Yeah. I got we got so back got to the, we got back to the Airbnb at like nine AM or some shit. Oof. I think I drank like four of those ghost energy drinks and like four coffees. I got to say that is a fucking bro ass move as a company owner to do that for one of your athletes. Yeah. <laughs> it's another way for him to get there, man. And I'm like, this is, I know, but I, I, I'll, I, let's be serious. 99% of other yeah. company owners would not go through that lengths to do that for their athletes. So that's yeah. a fucking sick move for sure. Well, that was a cool video. Samson put up too when you arrived. I know. I know he was, <laughs> you know what, man, Samson's such a good fucking person. It's like, yeah. I couldn't, he looks I couldn't fucking so good right now too. He looks fucking so big. And man, you too. know what? It was totally worth it because, you know, we didn't know that it was going to be like a posing coaching. We thought it was just watching. You're going to pose for the video and we're going to put it on. So who did he pose for Tyler, Tyler and Jim. And and JM, they're all there and like, well, sorry, Tyler was on a FaceTime because he was away, but like, all three of them were in like, watching him and critiquing him and like helping him tweak things and like, it was so fucking valuable, because everybody has their version of what they like, right? Yeah. Oh, I like the front double this way. I like the front double that way. But when you're getting it from the, the Olympian, head, the, the head judges, you're like, well, fuck. Now I don't have to worry about it. Yep. I know what they like. I'm doing it. Yeah. yeah so it was totally invaluable. And then fucking Sam. 
he was catching a flight from Cincinnati to to Pittsburgh, but he had to stop in DC. So he gets to DC and they're like, Your flight's canceled. So I'm like, Do I gotta drive to fucking BC and pick this kid up too? <laughs> so we put him in a hotel overnight and he he was able to catch a flight the next day and get in, thank God. So we were able to get a training session with him and Samson together. Um, on the uh, on the word of Tyler too, we give a congratulations. Tyler got engaged this weekend. Congratulations, yeah, Tyler, Tyler, for getting married. Yeah, congratulations. I did not. Re- one thing was I didn't realize. Uh, they all watch that. Either they watch or they get a cliff notes on the podcast. I know because they yeah, were really? bust, they were busting my balls about the black curtain. Like, oh yeah, <laughs> repeated <laughs> like like fancy or go get a black curtain, put it behind Sam. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I'll, I'll read it to you too. I'm sure he would. Um, read what to me? I'm gonna read. <clears throat> he when I I I messaged I sent Tyler a voice note. Obviously, when I made the decision, I would be competing at the Olympia. I just wanted to like you know we talked about this. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, and just you know wanted to, to do them the the courtesy of of letting him know and kind of you know saying why I was doing what I was doing and wanted to let him know it wasn't like a health thing. I'm I'm perfectly healthy. It's nothing to do with that. Yeah, uh, and he just wrote a long note saying, you know, first and foremost, like thank you and, and glad to hear everything's good and blah blah blah. Uh, and then he said, "I'm not a big video watcher, um, but uh, a couple of my friends watch the podcast, so I've listened to quite a few of them now. And how you guys break down bodybuilding for the fans really helps people understand the sport better. Uh, so thank you for that. So that was a cool that's to hear from you know? That's awesome. That's really nice. Yeah. Um, I gotta tell you this though. So I got a chance to spend a little bit of time with Jim Banyan and. I can't believe he's fucking 80 years old. Crazy, eh? He Crazy, like man. totally fucking sharp. He's in there sharp. doing he's in there doing shrugs. It's like, yeah, I gotta yeah. work on my traps. I'm like, <laughs> but the funniest part Barbell? about it. The, the, no, no, he's a machine. But the funniest yeah. part about it, I told Paul this. So there's a there's a side door that goes to the parking lot of their gym. So he leaves. He says bye to everybody. He knows who Sam is, which is really cool. I'm like, does this like 80 year old man keep track of like all the social media shit? Yeah. But but he knows who Sam is, which was cool, but uh, he goes to leave, says bye to everybody, and then he walks away. And I'm t- I'm like watching him walk away. He goes this way, and he turns the corner, and the door is right there. And he picks his foot up, and he it was one of those doors like that's like flat with the, the steel bar across the middle. Kicks it that you have to push open. Yeah. Picks his foot up and boots the door open, and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, what did I just watch? It's like 80 year old man just like front kicks Kick the door. door. <laughs> yeah, like, so I had no idea why he did it. So afterwards, we say bye to JM, and we're leaving, and I realize the door sticks. So I'm, like, trying to open it. I can't open it, so I have to, like, push it really hard. But I'm, like, it was just funny because at the time, I'm, like, what the fuck is this 80-year-old man is just, like, front-kicking doors. I'm, like, what's going on? But then it <laughs> like, see in. you guys. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it clued in as the water. Awesome. It was fucking It's hilarious. impressive as fuck that a guy that age is kicking doors to begin with, you know? For but, sure. Yeah. Honestly, man, I hope if I even make it to 80, I hope I'm that, like, yeah. sharp. Yeah. 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 Anyway. Good for him. Uh, do you prefer cereal pre or post workout? Post workout. Post workout. Uh, Fuad, all the time. Fuad versus Phil Barone. <laughs> Fuad versus versus Phil, Phil Baroni. I don't know why that like <laughs> he shit out of me. He, he kicked the shit out of me. <laughs> Who is that? He's like an MMA he's fucking legend. He's an ex UFC fighter. <laughs> uh. I have a hard time connecting with my legs ever since I broke my foot. It also created an imbalance from right to left. Any tips on activation techniques and warm ups to help the mind muscle connection? Anybody, Mike or Ian, you want to take this? Mike? Make sure your foot's not broken still. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till your foot's healed. What if it's healed and you still have an issue? I mean, I think it would be best to probably try and do more unilateral movements, like so you can isolate that leg to get the feeling better without any bias from the other leg and assistance from the other leg. So doing like single leg, leg press, single leg extension, single leg ham curl, uh, you know, things Mm -hmm. I think I can help build that connection with that weight, that leg being the one that's taking the load. um, And, you know, make sure that their that ankle flexions where it should be on that broken foot. Cause if it's not moving right, it's just going to, the other side is just going to compensate. Yeah. So, and then that work on that ankle mobility for sure. Yeah. Okay. We're going to do a few fast ones because we're past the time. So, um, so what's Ian going to do for money now? <laughs> the same things I've always been doing, bro. <laughs> no, but I mean, obviously there's other things I want to do, like the judging and stuff like that. If I want to coach, if I'm not going, obviously you can't judge and coach at the same time. Um, but there's other things I want to do, but no, I mean, my sponsors haven't gone anywhere. I'm still getting paid by them. 
Um, you know, and then there's other things now I freed up time and energy to do that I can do, you know, like obviously, you know, there's other things we've talked about business stuff that we, you know, maybe I'd like to do in the future. Um, you know, and then judging, coaching, whatever it is. I mean, the world is my oyster, man. I can do whatever the fuck I want now, you know? Right. You can, you can still coach if you're judging, you just can't coach competitors. Yes. You can still do well, lifestyle I'm, I'm going to start potentially taking more like lifestyle clients yeah. um, and people that just want to like get in shape. And I have a few of those already. Um, but in terms of competitive clients, I don't want, you know, look, maybe I'll judge and it won't be something for me. And then I'll get more sure. into coaching. Um, but I want to at least explore that avenue first before I start taking on a hundred fucking competitive clients and like, hey, sorry guys, I actually want to judge full time. Uh, yeah, I gotta yeah. let them go. So it makes yeah. sense in order of operations to do the judging first, see how yeah. I feel about that and kind of what I can do in there, and then from there I can make the decision. Yeah. Yeah. Mike, if you had to estimate how much money you've spent on tattoos, what would it be? Fuck. No way of. I have no way of figuring that out. To be honest, to, over it's such just, a long period of time, it's fucking. Give us an over under over twenty k. I was gonna say ten, yeah. Probably yeah, around ten. Yeah. Ish. I'm going tomorrow. I'm going tomorrow for my consult. Yeah, I want to finish my so you're eight, getting an H on the top of your head. <laughs> yeah, Mike's not a <laughs> Mike's not a W. I want to get an H. <laughs> <laughs> No, I was, I, thinking about that. I was like, I've now always... they're not competing. I want to compete, complete the sleeve, you know? Well, I got the top part of my arm. Like, I have a tattoo here. I want to kind of finish. I want to get my forearm done because I can never enjoy my... the opposite. I already have my forearm You done, can't so be a I'm... fucking MMA fighter without tat sleeves, man. So you got to get going. That's not why ready. I'm doing it, Mike. Don't <laughs> you got to have calves on too, Fred. Can I tell you? I'll tell you why, Mike. You're a Harley why. and you're doing MMA. You need to be covered in tattoos. Uh, either yeah. either yeah. one of those activities requires full sleeves. 100%. Listen, I'll tell you why I'm doing it. This is why I'm doing it. I have two tattoos and I haven't been able to enjoy either one because they're in places I can't see. Yeah. I always want to get my forearms done or one of my forearms done at least so I can enjoy the fucking actual tattoo I have. Yeah. Does that make any sense to you being a tattoo guy? No, you don't give a shit. I've never, I don't see my back tattoos ever, so I don't get to enjoy them at all. No, of course not. But (laughs) But do you, but do you ever like look at your arm tattoos and shit? Probably not. I honestly now. don't. Like, I just don't even notice them anymore. Yeah, yeah. you stop noticing them. I don't even notice my yeah. the one on my forehead anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll see. I'm going to go talk to him. It's I. I like Rob. Uh, Rob Brown. Uh, I like him a lot. So I'm going to go talk to him, see what he can think of for a design, and then maybe I'll get it. Maybe I won't. Yeah. Um. Okay. Last one. Um. Uh... Oh, I got a couple questions for you guys. If I add Kool Aid, you know the squirt Kool Aids. Yeah, you know, like flavor stuff for your water, the flavored water, Mio stuff, yeah. Mio, Kool Aid, all that shit. If I have a, if I have a, a liter of water, and I squirt some Kool Aid in there, is it still water? Yes. Yeah. It, yeah. What do you mean? Does it count as water? No, I know it counts as water, but is it? Well, water? this is a tricky question because, like, the main ingredient in like Pepsi is water, right? So, like, it's not you don't consider that water; you consider it Pepsi. So right. you are altering it, but. I think your percentage at that point is so much water. If you're doing it into a liter, I would still consider it drinking water. Okay, so let's say I have a liter <laughs> of water. Water with with meal, not Wait meal water. I have a a, a a a liter of water, and I squirt some sugar free Kool Aid in it. Do I say Ian, do you want some Kool Aid, or do I say Ian, you want some water? No, I well, I, w- I wouldn't say it's because it's not just straight water because there would be flavoring to it. Just right. like if you were to give me a liter of water with electrolytes or EAAs in it. You right. would say, hey, do you want some EAAs or do you want some? So I would be like, hey, do you want some water? There's some Mio in it, you know? No, yeah. you wouldn't. That's what I would say. I wouldn't just say, is there water? I'd be like, hey, do you want some water? But it's flavored, you know? Oh, It's infused. Yeah. It I literally really- don't drink any water unless it has electrolytes in it. I don't drink yeah. any water yeah, unless it has any water. flavoring in it. So, I drink I, But if I flavored it with Kool-Aid, you would say, do you want some Kool-Aid? No. Oh, I yeah. wouldn't say, do you, is it Kool-Aid unless it's like, you actually mixed it with like real Kool-Aid powder to the point where it's like really diluted flavored Kool-Aid, you know? So you would say, do you want some water with Kool-Aid flavoring in it? I would just be like, hey, yo, do you want some water? But there's also some Kool-Aid in here, you know? I'd be like, hey, you want some water that doesn't suck? It tastes like fucking something. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, okay, okay. Second question. Would you ever use white or purple onion as a garnish? I use it all the time. As a garnish? As a garnish? 
I use like uh, I use red onion, purple onion, like in my salads and stuff all the time. That's not garnish though. That's like, you're eating that. It's you're eating it. So what do you mean is a garnish then? Garnish like a just... sprinkle on top, like parsley. Yeah, like a dressing. Like, yeah, like basil. A, gar- a garnish is literally yeah. just meant to design. Like, no, I would use I would use green onion in that case. Right, but you wouldn't use white or purple onion ever. No, I would use it as part of the meal, but not as a garnish per se. No, okay. I might use purple. When? Where? If you're going to use one, you're going to use purple. What yeah. sti- What yeah. meal? What meal have you ever had that has onion as a garnish, other than green onion? And usually, even if it's green onion, it's just the green part chopped really fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah I can't think of a dish that I've had with onion as a, gar- as a, no, as no a such, garnish. There's no such dish. Where you're usually going to eat the onion. Where's that coming, where from? That coming from? Yeah. yeah. Where's what coming you, from? That question. So on like, my who does that on my six and a half hour drive to New York. Matt, our videographer, came with me. He's a great guy. We had fucking a ton of laughs on the way. But we debated everything. And that was one of them, because he thinks onion could be a garnish. And I'm like, onion's not <laughs> not a fucking garnish. He's and like, what dish is Matt? It could be, but you're usually putting he's like, He's like, well, you can use it. I'm like, look, there's no hard and fast rules. You can make anything a garnish. But yeah. typically, I've never seen it on a meal. Did I mean, you ask him what meal had- he would do that with? He you, could sprinkle, you could sprinkle well, a little bit of chicken on top and call it a fucking garnish. You know what right, yeah, right. yeah. If you don't eat it, it's a garnish, really. So he's so he's like, so you're or making you can up eat the, garnishes too. Yeah, you can eat garnishes because parsley's a garnish and you can eat parsley. It's not like sure. Yeah. But, Cilantro. Yeah. But you don't yeah. so but this is like we had this like debate for like an hour. Because <laughs> he wouldn't he would he's like, but you're saying two different things. You're saying I can use it, but I but you wouldn't. And I'm like, yeah. You, it's a, it's not, <laughs> it's not not allowed. But if you did it at a restaurant, they'd think you're a retard. Well, you're you're actually kind of in turn proving that it's only gay if you're gay by doing this. If you realize, <laughs> oh no, <laughs> <laughs> because like you wouldn't do it's it. Only like, a garnish you, if you think it's if it, it is a garnish. Exactly. <laughs> like you might, you wouldn't suck a dick, but you could and still not be gay. You know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Last one. Last last one. Last one. You inadvertently help me out there. Okay. Last last one. This is making me hungry. Should I? What should okay. I order? <laughs> it's all this onion talk. Huh? I don't know, but I'm whatever serving. you order, I'm probably gonna end up ordering. Um, <laughs> listen, listen. Last question. So let's say you're mashing up ground beef in a frying pan, right? Ian, are you with me, Mike? I'm listening. Ground, okay. Yeah, ground, I'm about to you're, mashing. Ma- you're mashing up ground beef in a frying pan, and then you're gonna put spices on it, right? Does it matter if you sprinkle the salt, pepper all over it, or whatever spices you're using, or is it matter if you just put it in one spot? Oh, you oh. gotta you gotta disperse it even. You gotta no, spread you it. No, you don't. Yeah, <laughs> because it's no, you, you guys. What hour? What hour of the trip were you at when these questions <laughs> came up? <laughs> oh, man. You're just delirious on like four ghosts. Right? <laughs> <laughs> How many the salt one spot? <laughs> <laughs> well, because I had made us, I made us dinner before we got the call from Samson. So we were talking about the meal I made, and then he said something about dispersing the oregano all over the meat, and that's why it tasted so good. I'm like, it doesn't matter. Because you're going to mix it anyway. You know, it doesn't. But, okay, wait about the food. Like, did it you only, already have it the only, meat? It only matters on, like, a piece of on meat that you're not going to mix. Like, if you're making a chicken breast or a steak. Then I, you think if you're doing it, I think if you're doing it on raw meat in a pan, it's going to absorb into that meat more. So I think you need to evenly disperse it. Because I think no matter how much you chop it up, there's going to be hot spots of that seasoning. No That's matter what, what I think. No way. I agree. Hundred yeah. percent. Okay, first of all, you can't cook, so it doesn't matter what you think. <laughs> I can do basics. <laughs> I can cook. No, because the ground. More, I the can ground, put a pop tart in the toaster. <laughs> the ground beef will create its own juices, and those spices are going to be diluted into the juices anyway. And maybe in something with Don't that you... as much fat and water as ground beef, I might agree with you. Sure. Well, that's all I'm saying. But... I just said ground beef. I didn't okay. say like anything else. But don't you drain that shit? No. It's delicious. Hey, what about it? what if you're what if you're cooking ninety nine one turkey? Are you going to disperse it more or pour it on one spot? I'm probably still going to. I mean, I don't listen. I disperse it anyway, but I don't think it makes a difference with ground meat. I think it does. Yeah, I think it depends on what stage it's in. Like if it's a big ball still that you haven't mashed up yet, then yeah. But Why? if you already got it all like Why broken up, matter? Why would it matter? I think I, I think Ian's right. You're gonna have some hot spots. Yeah. I I okay. Just to prove you guys wrong, because he said the same thing. I literally made dinner the next night. And put all the spices in one corner of the pan, <laughs> and it tasted exactly the same. With yeah, like with ground beef, though. Yes, with ground beef. Okay. I didn't. You, do don't, you don't drain your ground beef. No, why would I? Well, uh, you should make a meat bowl, and then pack the center with just the spices, and then <laughs> <Yeah>. cook it. <laughs> and you can't flip it. 
till the <laughs> end. If you can't disperse it, then you guys are no, right. No, you have saying. to wait till it's like cooked and then mash it down <laughs> and see if it's spreads over. <laughs> a well, yeah. What are you gonna like order? Push it, put a hole in a ball and shove it all. I don't know. What, what should I get? I don't got a ton out here. I got pizza, pizza. I got mucho burrito. Whatever you get, out. whatever you get, I'm getting. Shawarma house, sushi canada, subway. I just told, I just told Kath to bring me home pizza. Where is she? <laughs> At the gym. Well, pizza. Are you just gonna get? Pizza? You just gonna get pizza, pizza? I said, well, there's a pizza iolo. Is that how you say it? I don't know. I've never you know, been. Those, uh, it's like a chain here. here in Toronto. Ten o'clock wow. where I live. I don't think I got much choices other than fucking wings and pizza. Get the all dressed Doritos, man. Ooh. Yeah, I could order some of those. Get some Instacart. Uh, Subway. Okay, Subway is sounding kind of good right now, to be honest. I love a good Subway sandwich. Yeah, me too. Yeah, Subway I, never disappoints. I, I literally had one every day for a year there. It was like a year of that. Every day I went to Subway. Did I ever tell you about this? How I ate it like six meals a day for a while? Oh, you did tell me. <laughs> like <that>. Jared? <laughs> yeah. No, was, I, had girl, I had a girlfriend that lived like, she went to school. She was from like my town, but then she moved to Kingston like two hours away from me and went to college there. So when I would go there like for to visit and like stay there for a few days, my mom didn't trust me to give me just cash. She's like, you're going to do something stupid oh, with this or like good. not buy food or you're going to fuck. So she would give me Subway gift cards. So she's <laughs> like, this is, you can only eat Subway, you know, but you have to get food. So it's like, that's what I ate. I would just go there, breakfast, get a breakfast one. I get like a steak, you know, steak one. I get a chicken one. I get fucking three or four throughout the day. Yeah. You ever try that, and sell them? You, 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 you ever try and sell them? <laughs> try Sabo? No, have sell you ever them. tried to sell them or trade them? Oh, sell them? No, I didn't know. I would have tried to trade them. <laughs> Hang it out in front of Subway. Trade them for give drugs. <laughs> give you a $20 card for that. Get your gift cards here. Five bucks off. Front <laughs> <laughs> of the racket. All right, so what are we doing next week? Are we going? Are we all going to Columbus? I think so. I'm going to Florida first, and then I'm going to come there on the back end. Oh, okay. So you're, are you going to get there on next the Sunday? Week? Yeah, I think I'm going to go to Florida on the 25th, likely. I'll spend the 25th to the first day or fly in the first, say the first or the third, and then come back. So we're staying Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Whatever you want, yeah. Is that what you're saying? October 1st, 2nd, 3rd. I got a wedding in Toronto, September 30th. Yeah, the next day we leave. Yeah. The next day. You're not going to drink, are you? Well, a little bit, but not going to get like destroyed. Yeah. I'm going to do a shit ton of shrooms. I'll be fine to drive. I'm going to do a lot of shrooms. I'll smoke a lot of weed, but I'm not going <laughs> to drink. Well, I'm, I'm going to drive anyway, so you can just sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plating it, I'm like fuck because my truck and a bunch of my shit is still in my in Florida. Yeah. So I'm like, do I want to fly to back. Florida, get my truck, get a U-Haul behind it, get all my shit, then drive to Columbus, chill with you guys to break the drive up, and then drive yeah. home? From- yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good idea. But that's kind of like it's kind of out of the way a little bit because it's like 15 hours from Florida to there, and then 10 hours from Columbus to meet Ottawa. What is it yeah. from Florida right to Ottawa? I think it's basically like 15. You know? Oh, so you're adding like 10 hours to your trip. Yeah. No, it's got to be more than 15, dude. Yeah, because it's like 15 from Windsor, and you're like yeah, eight yeah. More hours, another six, seven hours from there. It is the oh, angle, though. Hours, so I'm only adding three hours. Yeah, I would totally do depends that. It, yeah, it depends on what angle you're going. Okay, so the angle? Go to Buffalo. <laughs> you think I could do 15-hour drive alone, though? I might die. I did 17 oh. by myself, but I smoked like... You want to fly to Florida and then we'll drive over? <laughs> Smoke the fucking carton of Bartimore. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fly down there and drive back with you. That's fine. Yeah, we'll go the twenty. Or no, you could just meet me the day before, whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. You go. Yeah, and then we'll drive. We'll rip hang it back. Out, in. You go hang out with Chris, and I'll fly down at the very last day. Yeah. I mean, look, I don't think it's that big a deal. It, Fifteen hours is quite a long to do one shot. Not I would do it with you guys. I'll come with you guys. I would do Chris. I would do two days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? He'll come with you. So I'll come with you guys. I'll train Chris. Yeah. <laughs> He's got his new gym now. Have you seen his fucking private gym he built? I saw yeah. some of the some of the yeah. photos. Uh, fucking nice, man. Yeah. He put up a thumbnail. I skimmed through the um, his yeah. YouTube video. Is yeah. it good? Yeah, it's good. Yeah. What size is it? It's a pretty big warehouse. I don't know. It's pretty. Well, you've been you've been to my, you've been to my gym. Is it like that or bigger? It's maybe another half again as long. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Nice. Well, yeah. you know what? I think for somebody like him, it's the only thing that makes sense. Yeah, he couldn't go to a public gym. Training, training in public gyms is, is very difficult for him. And I think yeah. he just likes having 
you know, like for me, I don't like training necessarily in solitude, you know, yeah. like I like to have the energy of people around me and yeah. I'll, I'll take a public gym where like, I might wait for a machine here and there over being by myself. But I think for him at the level he's at, like with fame, um, plus like, I think he's just someone that likes to be kind of in his own element, put on his own music and like kind of just fucking lock in. I think for him, it's the best thing ever for sure. Well, I think also, but the thing that I think a lot of people forget about having your own gym is when you do want like the camaraderie or energy of other people, you just invite some friends. Bring some buddies over. No, yeah. like Paul, like Paul comes with me. Sometimes there's a couple like well, yeah, and I mean like look who's down there. You got fucking Brett and like all these yeah. guys that are down yeah. there. You bring these guys over, train for sure. It's great. Yeah, yeah. So he has a kind of luxury of I gotta I gotta restock too. I'm getting low on my these are the ones that I'm on now. These are my favorites. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> no so the other ones you liked? No more Zins. Better for Zins. Zins. These are like, rogue. Like Zins. Zins. rogue. These are rogue, man. The flavor of these is fucking so much stronger. It's so good. And you can leave you could leave these in for four fucking hours and they still get flavor to them. I wonder yeah. what a flight would cost from Detroit to Florida. It's probably a couple hundred bucks. Oh, yeah, probably nothing. And then I mean, what? What would you, Mike? Are you coming to stay here the night before? Like, what are you doing? Well, if you're in Florida, no. No, but I mean, <laughs> if, if I don't, if I don't go, I don't know. Because I mean, we were maybe just maybe you. Are you going to be down there on the first? Well, that's yeah. Are you going to go to Ohio on the first? Yeah, I thought we'd go on the Sunday, and then and then we'd have like a day together to eat and chill and stuff, and then. We could hang out Saturday, do the podcast. For those yeah, wondering, so just... for those for those wondering, we're doing the. Well, I don't think I am, but I'm going to drive down and hang out with Mike. But uh, Mike's doing Dave Tate's podcast, and so is Sam. Well, if you fly economy, it's two hundred dollars Canadian. Okay, first class is like a little bit more though. I'm checking that double, probably double that. Uh, it's eleven eleven hundred bucks. So Paul... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Double. So Paul, it's, what are you? Uh, Five hundred and two dollars for business class. Okay, but I might have to stay back just to fucking because I got to take Paul too. Yeah, yeah, no. Well, I'll right. be back on the Sunday. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So you're gonna, you're probably gonna ride up with me. Yeah. Okay. And Mike, are you bringing Cat? Yeah. Then I'll probably honestly, I wasn't even, I was planning to honestly go to the Olympia and then drive back from the Olympia. You know, well, I'll already be there, so I could do that with you. Yeah, so I'll do that. I'll just fly in for the Olympia, do the Olympia weekend yeah. that's in Orlando. Then we're yeah. only 90 minutes away, an hour and a half away from, from uh, Port St. Lucie, and then I'll drive home from there. Okay. Okay. Well, Mike, you're welcome to come stay the Saturday night if you want to crash and then go with Sunday. Or if you just want to do the thing one shot on Sunday, we can just all meet there. Well, side, side note, too, I don't know if you guys have them. I already talked to you, but I got a bunch of Olympia tickets if you guys need them. No, I already oh, yeah. – no, you don't. I already told you I want to buy them. Oh, okay. So I have well, six mainly, that are all well, mainly, I have six I, that are all together. So whoever needs tickets, my mom obviously wants to get rid of them. So we got uh, me, you, whoever else needs them. Well, Mike is sponsoring the show, so Mike, you're probably going to get free tickets anyway, right? I'm not sponsoring the show. I'm just showing up to the expo, the booth. <laughs> yeah, but you get you get tickets with your booth, no? I, th I don't think because we don't sponsor the show, we just have a booth. Okay, from what yeah. I understand. Well, okay, well, if you need tickets, then we, I have six that are all in yeah. a row. So that's four of us can sit together right there. Yeah. Okay. And then, and then maybe what we'll do is we'll auction off the other two to fans and they get to sit with us and I'll make a premium on them. Well, oh, there you go. <laughs> Julian well, suggested that. He's well, like, let's put them in on the business plan now. <laughs> <laughs> just, just be like, hey, they get to fucking, you know, sit with the hostile or, and fucking podcast group, you know? Yeah. 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 But you get final say whether they, they get to sit in that or not. Yeah, we, have to, we, have, we have to vet them. Yeah, you have to vet them. Vet them. <laughs> you're a <laughs> fucking weirdo. You're out of here. Yeah. <laughs> cool, and you're paying 15% over ticket price. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Paul, lead us off with a leave us with a prayer. Well, we got a few things to pray for tonight, Fuad. My, yeah. uh, my, my pack, my pack, your arm today. I got why don't you say, it, why don't you uh, add in something for Neil, too? Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, dear leader. Um, <laughs> Um, I want to pray for Neil and his and his and his family and um my peck and uh Fuad's arm, Ian's running abilities, Mike's fighting at your shoulder too, Mike. Um, just you know, strength for us all to get better and uh carry on, and keep fucking doing shit. Keep giving her. Yeah, keep giving it. <laughs> keep giving her 100. Right. How's that one? And continue to not be entered. It continue to not be entered as always. It's always in our prayers. May none of us ever be entered. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen to that. All right, boys. Have a good night. All right. Bye. Good night, you guys.